Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. The Detroit baseball fans here, as well as all baseball fans around the country, get an additional thrill out of the presence of an outstanding former Tiger player, Charlie Garringer, who had the pleasure of throwing out the first ball to catch a Bill Freehand of the Tigers. He was a former infielder. I know that you appreciated the greatness of Garringer. I certainly did, Jack Regal. The Tigers taking the field. This game is about ready to start. I had the pleasure of playing against Charlie Garringer a few times in spring training and what a ball player he was. Let's skip over these batting orders quickly once again for you. For the Cardinals, it's Brock, Blood, and Maris, Cepeda, McCarver, and Shannon, Javier, Maxville, and Washburn. And for the Tigers, McAuliffe, Stanley, and Kaline, Cash, Horton, and Northrop, Freehan, Wirt, and Wilson. The Tigers have taken the field defensively. They have a battery of Earl Wilson and Bill Freehan. Don Wirt is at third base. Mickey Stanley is at short, looking up, checking the sun right now. Dick McAuliffe at second base, and Norm Cash at first. Around the outfield, Willie Horton in left. The center fielder is Jim Northrup, and the right fielder is Al Kali. Joel Schultz doing the coaching for the Cardinals, and Dick Sisler is at first. The umpire, Stan Landis of the National League, is working behind the plate. At first base, Bill Kinneman of the American League. Doug Harvey of the National League at second base, and Bill Haller at third base. He's from the American League. Along the left field foul line, Tom Gorman, he worked the plate in the opening game of the series, and Jim Honachick of the American League is in the right field corner. We're all set for the afternoon of baseball in the third game of the 1968 World Series. I took an unofficial poll before the game, Pee Wee, and talking to most everybody I could, and I proposed that the team that won this game would win the World Series. And I would say that about 70% of the people said yes. How about you? I kind of believe that. Of course, uh, the Cardinals still have one thing going for them, and Bob Gibson, but I don't believe he can win four games. And I believe that uh, Denny McLean is going to try to do something about that in uh, the game tomorrow. That's the ball game tomorrow, McLean and Gibson. Right now, we have Washburn and Wilson. The series tied at a game apiece, and Luke Brock stepping into the batter's box to lead it off. There's been a little furor about... Lou Brock's base stealing with regard to the game situation and uh, there were some quotes in the Detroit papers today about Lou being a showboat. He laughs it off. He says, let them say what they want. So we've got something going as we usually do during these fall classics. Well, of course, Jack, the game has changed considerably. I can remember when I was playing, if you were six runs ahead or six runs behind, you would never think of stealing. And if you did steal, the next time you came up to that plate, you may be and a low bridge by the pitcher. But I cannot uh, say, anything against, say anything against Lou Brock because I have to agree with him. He and a fellow by the name of Will and a boy by the name of Bert Campaneris have made a lot of money with their legs, and I don't blame them. I'd run any time I could. Lou Brock in the batter's box. He's a left-handed batter. The third baseman, Don Work, comes in about five steps in front of the bag. Wilson, the right-hander, into the windup and hits his first pitch of the ball game, and it's low in the dirt and bounces back to the screen, ball one. I don't care who you are. When you're in your first World Series, no matter who you are, it's got to get to you a little bit. You have to have a few butterflies. That first pitch for Wilson was just a little bit low. The outfield shallow straight away, and here's the pitch to Lou Brock, and Lou takes it low for ball two. I'm surprised at the shallowness of Jim Northrup in center field. Can he go back in the ball that well, Pee Yes, he can. I haven't seen Jim play too much in center field. I've seen the fellow that shortstop play there, and he can go back on it with the best of them. Two balls, no strikes to count, and the next one on the way to Brock, and he takes the ball high and away, and that's ball three, and Lou Brock might be on his way to first base. Wilson with a 3 nothing count on the leadoff hitter. Flood and Maris will follow in this inning. We just started the ball game from Tiger Stadium in Detroit. 
Wilson throws a strike. He caught the corner at the knee. Brock started down to first base. He thought the ball was out of the strike zone. It's three and one. Time is called by the third base umpire, Bill Heller, whose brother, by the way, is the catcher. Here's ball four as uh, as the spitball violation is called by the third base umpire, Bill Haller. He makes it ball four because Earl Wilson touched his fingers to his mouth. And down goes Lou Brock to first base. And now Bill Haller goes into the Detroit dugout. He gets into it with some of the Tiger players. And Brock is on with a walk as a result of... Earl Wilson putting his fingers to the mouth while he was on the pitching mound. Well, I'm sure, Jack, that most of the fans listening to the ball game know the rule, but in case they don't, we'll explain it to them. You may go to your mouth with your fingers if you're off the pitcher's circle. But evidently, Earl Wilson went to his mouth while standing on the mound, and that's an automatic ball. Well, there's something they'll be writing about after the ball game. Here's Kurt Blood. Blood, two out of seven in the series thus far. Brock Lee doesn't go. Ball one high. Norm Cash is holding. Norm Cash is holding against Lou Brock, who has already stolen three bases in the ballgame. Outfield playing, playing flood to pull just a bit. A lead by Brock. He's not going. The pitch is high and away, and that's ball two. It's hard to tell if that was a pitch out or not. I think it was from the way Bill Freehand was moving. Jack, I was thinking that on both the pitches, looks to me like it was just a little bit high and outside. Bill Freehand wanting to get a good shot at Brock if he does go. Brock's going. The pitch swung on. And no throw by Freehand, who couldn't handle the low pitch, which is ball three. So Brock steals his fourth base of the series. He set a series record last year by swiping seven. We're only in the third game. Most folks project that this will go six or seven, and there's no telling how many Brock will steal. He's at second. With nobody out and a three-nothing count on flood. Maris waiting to hit next. Wilson has thrown only one strike. The right-hander checks the runner and fires, and it's a strike call, and it's 3-1. Flood, like Brock, started down to first base, but is called back by the plate on Landis. Jack, it's amazing how much a fellow like Brock can upset a ball club. He had Earl Wilson, he had Bill Freehand worrying about him stealing. They pitched out, he got, to, he got himself in a hole. It also helps the hitter, because he usually gets the fastball to hit. The 3-1 pitch coming. Flood takes it low, ball four, and Wilson has walked the first two men to face him in the ballgame. And it brings up Roger Maris. He's looking for his first hit in the World Series. He's played only one game. He's 0 for 3. When he hit the record-breaking 61 home runs, he hit six of them here in Tiger Stadium. With a friendly right field foul line, only 325 to the seats in right. Two on, nobody out, first inning. Rocks at second and flood at first. They play Maris to pull just a bit. They give him the left field corner. Wilson from the belt fires, swung on foul, and Maris had a good cut and fouled it back, strike one. Well, you can see how these Cardinals play. Wilson walks Brock, walks Flood. You would think that Roger Maris may be taking that first pitch and see if Wilson may be uh, having a little control problem, but he chopped down on that first pitch. He was trying to make it 3-0. He waits. Left-handed batter, Maris. Wilson leaning in, gets the sign from Freehand. Brock and Flood lead away. And the pitch coming. Maris takes it high and away. Way high. Way outside. Ball one, one and one. The lights have been turned on here at Tiger Stadium. Not that it's that dark now, but in anticipation of it being dark at the close of the game. And it'll also be dark for one of these two teams. They'll be down two games to one. Maris waiting. Wilson ready. Brock a short lead. Maris swings. Hits a foul off the end of the bat. Leach for a pitch low and away. Now Wilson's ahead of a hitter for the first time. Wilson on the first two hitters. He was keeping the ball up. Wilson is not a high ball pitcher. He must keep the ball down. His ball sinks. So whenever he's coming up with the ball, he's in trouble. And he'd like the double play ball now on that sinker pitch of his. Brock at second. Flood at first. There's nobody out. We're in the first inning of the ball game. One ball. Two strikes the count to Maris. Earl Wilson is ready. And he fires. And it's a little bit outside. It's ball two. And Wilson thought he might have had him. But Landis wouldn't give him the call. It's two and two. Waiting in the on-deck circle is Orlando Cepeda. Joe Schultz coaching a third. Hollering in encouragement to Maris. It was in his final season of baseball. Wilson ready again. The 2-2 pitch coming. Maris takes ball three in the dirt. And a full count of three and two. 
Almaris doesn't strike out too often, particularly against a right-handed pitcher. And with Brock at second, I imagine they'll be going on a 3-2 pitch with nobody out. What do you think, Pee-wee? Well, if you just call the shot at Maris, and you know better than I do that he does not strike out. If he gets a piece of the ball, I'm sure that Red Sandys will be sending. And with a fellow like Brock on second and Flood on first, I don't think you have to hesitate too much. Wilson walked the first two men and has a 3-2 count on Roger Maris. The runners lead away. Wilson steps off the rubber as Mickey Stanley, the shortstop, gets in behind Brock, but there's no throw. Ready again. The runners are going. Maris swings, hits it foul, and will do it again. The ball bounces past Dick Sisler at first base, and the plate umpire Landis sends a new one to the mound. Brock returns to second and flood to first. Ray Washburn is not the kind of a pitcher whom you'd expect to throw a shutout when he goes out there, and so he would like very much to get some runs with which to work. Ghost Parma, a right-hander. Is warming up down in the Detroit bullpen in the left field corner as Wilson is in early trouble. The runners were going on the last 3 2 pitch and likely will do it again. Maris waits. The runners go. Maris takes the strike. There's the throw. Double play coming up. He's out of third. Stadium. Now floods at second base and they're two out. Maris took a call third strike and it was a good pitch from Wilson at the knee. Freehand fired the ball to work and Brock couldn't even slide. He was out by that much. A double play going 2-5. Freehand to work. First time that Brock has been out stealing in series play. After 11 successes, now it takes a base hit by Sabeta to get flood home. Pitch high, ball one. Two walks, then the strikeout, and Brock out stealing. And the Tiger fans get the first time to cheer today. Outfield deep around to the left for Cepeda, who's had two out of eight in the series, driven in one run. He waits. The pitch from Wilson. Swung on, and a ground ball to the left to Stanley. Up with the ball, big hop. Juggles it and throws. He's out the end of the over. At the end of one half inning, no score. Along with Jack Buck at Tiger Stadium in Detroit, Michigan. The third game of the World Series between the Cardinals and the Tigers, and what are the first thing? Looked to me like the Tiger is in real bad shape, Buck. Jack. Uh, Brock got a walk, then Buck got a walk, and uh, everything was looking bad for the Tigers. And with one pitch, everything looked good for the Tigers. And maybe just the lift they need. In the field now. Cardinals on defense have a battery of Washburn and McCarver. The leadoff hitter is Dick McAuliffe and the crowd's recent. Around the Cardinal infield, Shannon at third, Maxwell short, Javier at second, Cepeda at first. Brock in left, Watt in center, Maris in right. Tony Cuccinello coaching at third base for the Tigers, and Wally Moses at first, and McCulloch with three hits already in the series. A left-handed batter steps in. Batted 249 during the regular season, and he likes the short right field porch. Outfield plays him around to the right. Shannon, even with the bag at third, the first pitch is a breaking ball, goes low from Washburn. Ball one. Ray Washburn, 30-year-old right-hander, his best year ever in the major leagues with a record of 14-8. and eight. Lives in Kirkland, Washington. Comes to the plate to McCullough. He takes it low again, ball two. McCullough with that classic batting stance of his, wide open, facing the pitcher. Kicks that front foot, the right foot as the pitch comes in. Washburn behind the leadoff hitter. Usually has outstanding control. Into the windup, the pitch, and it swung on. Hit foul off to the left and out of play. Two balls and a strike. In this first inning, it'll be McCulloch, Mickey Stanley, and Al Kaline. Cardinals did not score in the first inning. Left one man on base. Jack, what type of pitcher is Ray Washburn? His Break. best pitch in the last couple of months has been his off-speed breaking pitch, and so you'd say he's a breaking ball pitcher rather than a fastball pitcher. Throws a fastball, slider, and curve, and changes speeds on the curve. He comes to the plate. Ground ball is Cepeda. He traps the ball, knocks it down. Washburn covers out at first. And Cepeda makes the play himself. The traffic was a little too tough for Cepeda to throw the ball. Washburn was over there to cover. 
But Orlando preferred to make the play himself, and he did. McAuliffe is out first base on assistant. The batter is Mickey Stanley. Stanley, a right-handed batter. Normally a center fielder and one of the best in the game. Playing shortstop today. He's had three out of nine in the series. And they play him to pull around to the left. Pull wind up by Washburn. He fires, and a curveball stays high, ball one, and that's the kind of a pick that could get a further hurt in this ballpark. I don't think Washburn would like to throw too many pitches like this. He got that pitch down just a little bit. That spells trouble. Here's the next one to Mickey Stanley, and it's a breaking ball inside, and that's ball two. He's been behind the first two hitters, as Earl Wilson was for the Tigers in the first inning. The sun is in and out of the cloud. The lights are on at Tiger Stadium. We're in the first inning, and there's no score. On 2-0, oh, Stanley swings, hits it from second base and out of the air, behind the bag, up at the ball, throws. He's out. Stanley out by a step, 4-3. Out of the air was back on his heels as he fielded the ball. But had time, nonetheless, to get rid of Stanley, and here is Al Kaline. Is empty. Tigers batting in the first. And K-Line with three out of nine so far in the series at the plate. A right-handed batter. Strictly a pull hitter. Brock in the left field corner. Flood in left center. Shannon behind the bag of third. The pitch from Washburn. Strike called. A good fastball. Well, Washburn in his first inning has not been in the trouble that Earl Wilson encountered but got out of. In his first inning, there's a curveball that got away from Washburn over the head of the hitter, one and one. A ball and a strike. Now McCarver rubs up the baseball before returning it to the mound. Waiting on deck to hit is Norm Cash. About 53,000 at the ballpark, all wearing wraps today, curve in the dirt. Now he's behind K-Line, two balls and a strike. The Washburn has been behind each of the first three hitters. K-Line deep in the batter's box, bat held high. He waits, he takes a strike call, he started to go, and took a slider in the outside corner, and Washburn has shown him a little bit of everything. I think you'll see that both of these pitchers today, uh, with these long ball hitters up there, they'll try to keep the ball out of weight from them. Washburn caught the corner that time to make the count two and two. Here he comes again, and Al Kaline takes it long away, and that's ball three. A call up ground to do Cepeda. Stanley was thrown out by Javier, and a three-two count on Kaline. And the next one on the way, swung on, fly ball, left field, Brock going back, so squad, they're both there, and Brock makes the catch. K-Line hit the ball rather deep to left, out, caught by Brock. At the end of one inning, no score. Uh, teams are happy that that first inning is out of the way. Well, I'm sure they are, especially the Tigers. They really did get themselves in a jam that first inning. Wilson looked real shaky, and you have two men on that on those sacks like Brock and Flood. It looked like nothing but trouble with Roger Maris up there, but Wilson made a great pitch, three and two on Maris, and he was caught looking, and they threw Brock out easily. And also, Jack, one thing in the Tigers' favor, Stanley was able to play right on the bag to hold Brock close because Maris is definitely a full hitter. He didn't have to worry about him hitting the ball in the left field. It was a point, and it kept Brock from getting his usual big lead. Well, Cepeda made the last out in the first inning, leaving a man on, so McCarver leads off, looking for his second series hit. A left-handed batter, Earl Wilson, the right-hander, comes to the plate, and McCarver takes a strike call to the knee. Levine McCarver, Shannon, and Javier in this inning. Outfield playing McCarver to pull just a bit. Because Tim is capable of hitting the ball out in a ballpark like this. But most often, he's going the other way, into left center. Wilson delivers, and McCarver takes it outside for a ball. One and one. Don Wirt at third base is a step in front of the bag with a left-handed hitter up there and playing off the line about 12 feet. Stanley at shortstop. Call up at second base at the edge of the grass, and Norm Cash pretty well off the line at first. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Low. McCarver started to go, held up, took ball two. 
Cardinals won the opening game. Tigers came back to win the second and even it up. And here we're in the second inning and there's no score. McCarver, the leadoff hitter. And the 2-1 delivery coming. Swung on and a high fly ball to center. An easy chance for Jim Northrup. Waits under the ball and has it for the first up. McCarver got good wood on that uh, ball. It sounded good, but it looked really like he tried to pull an outside pitch and couldn't get enough on it. Well, as you said, McCarver, most of the time he'd be hitting the ball in the left field and left center, but he was trying to pull it and uh, didn't quite get around on it enough. Mike Shannon steps in. Cardinal third baseman, a right-handed batter. He's had two hits and one RBI in the series. He goes down. Ball one. The pitch was up and in. Ball one to Mike Shannon. Shannon led the Cardinal ball club and runs batted in this year. They play him to pull. Bill Freehand gives the sign. Wilson delivers and Shannon swings and grounds one back to the pitcher on one off. Shannon's out of first. From Wilson to Cash and there two dogs. Defensively for the Tigers, Don Ward at third, Mickey Stanley at short, Dick McCullough at second base, and Norm Cash at first. Willie Horton is in left. Willie will be hitting in the next inning following Cash. In center field, Jim Northrup, and in right field, Al Kali. With two out on the bases, empty Javier is the hitter. Top half the second, no score. Wilson seems to have settled down considerably. He pitches to Uli, and it's a ball outside. Javier has had three hits, more than any other Cardinal in the series so far. And he's the only red bird to drive in two runs. Cardinals have only one home run in the two games played, and the Tigers have three. Javier deep in the batter's box. Takes the ball low, and that's ball two. Javier hit 260 this year. And a good deal of that average compiled against left-handed pitching. He murders the left-handers. Against a right-hander like Wilson, well, you don't know what to expect. Into the windup, the Detroit hurler fires. Javier takes it inside, and that's ball three. Three and oh. Javier looks down at Joe Schultz at third base. See if the hitter take is on. It's conceivable that Javier would be swinging at this 3 nothing pitch, but not very likely. Maxville waiting on deck. Two out. Nobody on. On 3-0. Low ball four, and that's the third walk given up by Earl Wilson. Javier walks with two out. There have been no hits in this ball game as yet. The Tigers went down in order in their first inning. Cardinals had two men on in the first, but both by walks. And now a two-out walk issued to Javier brings up Dal Maxville. Maxville, the Cardinal shortstop, looking for his first hit in the series. Javier is on at first to stolen on the base against Detroit. The pitch to Maxville. Swung on and a fly ball to left. Back goes Horton. Back near the wall. He's got it. Maxville flying to left to end the inning. At the end of an inning and a half, the Cardinals nothing, Detroit nothing. Maybe Reese along with Jack Buck. Bottom half the second inning. No score in this ball game. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Cardinals. No runs, no hits, and no errors for the Tigers. Leading off for the Tigers, the bottom half the second inning will be Norm Cash, then followed by Willie Hartman and Jim Northrop. And Jack, Dal Maxwell only hit one home run this year, but he came close on that one. Another five feet. That ball would have been over the head of Willie Hartman in left field and would have been 2 to nothing, St. Louis. But that's about Maxwell's best shot. The little guy bumped up and couldn't quite get it into the seat. I'm sure he wasn't trying to. Cash Horton and Northrop will bat for the Tigers in the second. And here is perhaps the, well, one of the two most dangerous hitters in the Tiger club in this ballpark. Norm Cash, left-handed batter, already has a home run in the series. Takes the ball outside. He's had three hits in the two games played. And they play him to pull. Into the lineup, Ray Washburn fires, and a changeup is hit foul past first base as Washburn let up on the pitch. Cash way out in front, fouled it down into the corner, makes it one and one. Cash batted 263 this year. Only 325 down the line into right field of the seats. And that's Cash territory. 
He can hit him on the lower deck, upper deck, or over the roof here in this ballpark, which he's done. One ball, one strike to count on the leadoff hitter. Cardinal right-hander fires, and it's a good strike call at the knees. Cash down low. One ball, two strikes. That might have been Washburn's best fastball of this ball game in its early stages. And he's out in front of Norm Cash. Delivers, and the curve goes in the dirt. That makes it two and two, and the fans get on the umpire. All that one a ball of a strike, you bum, I say. <laughs> two and two. Give a lot of room to Cash in left center, and Brock is way off the left field foul line. The 2-2 delivery is low inside with a slider. And a full count now of 3-2. Tigers haven't had a base runner yet. We're in the bottom of the second inning. No score. And the 3-2 pitch is on the way. And it's swung on and hit off the end of the bat behind short. Maxwell has to get it. He's back there and makes the catch. When I said Maxwell has to get it, he could get no help from Brock, who was playing way around into left center. Here's Willie Horton and listen to the crowd. The Tiger left fielder, leading home run hitter of the 1968 campaign, Willie Horton has had two hits, including a home run in the series. What a menacing-looking fellow he is. 5'10", 200-pounder, steps in. Deep in the batter's box, wide stance. The pitch, curveball, low, ball one. One out. Time called as McCarver goes to talk to his pitcher, Ray Washburn. They're playing just the opposite for Horton as they were for Cash. Way around to the left. Rock near the corner, blood in left center. Straight away center field is almost empty with Horton up there. And Maris way off the right field foul line. Shannon deep behind the bag at third to wind up in the pitch. Breaking ball stays inside, and that's ball two. One out, nobody on. You get behind a fellow like Horton. He's looking for a pitch, and if he gets it, watch it. Washburn delivers. High ball three. And now Horton has to look at Tony Cuccinello. Can I hit? He might be swinging good. What do you think about this, Clark? You have to pitch a little bit more differently than you do in the Cardinals. You'll notice the pitchers will be three and two and three and one because they can't just afford to put that ball down the middle of the plate. They're always trying to keep that hitter from hitting that long ball. The three nothing pitch is a strike call and a good fastball from Washburn who challenged him, makes it three and one. Willie steps out, knocks the dirt out of his spikes before getting back in. Washburn is retired four men in a row. Pitched a no-hitter earlier this year, you know, against the Giants. The 3-1 foul back to the screen. Makes it 3-2. and two. Willie Horton up there with a the 3-2 count. One out. Base is empty. Last half of the second inning and no score in the ballgame. Jim Northrup, waiting in the on-deck circle. McIver waits for the hitter to get set, gives the sign, and here's the 3-2 pitch. Low in the dirt, ball four, and Horton becomes the first Tiger base runner. And now, Earl Wilson has walked three, and Washburn has walked one, and the batter is Jim Northrup, the center fielder for Detroit. Up has had one hit in the two games. Strong left-handed batter, more a straightaway hitter than Norm Cash. Cepeda's holding against Horton at first base. There's hitting room through the right side of the infield. The pitch inside with a slider ball one. Cardinal infield of Shannon, Maxville, Javier, and Cepeda looking for the double play ball to end the inning. Northrop at the plate. Wanting to do something with Horton at first and one out. The pitch. Let up goes high. 
Ball two. Northrop started to go, held up. Washburn's behind the scooter. Two and oh. Breeze blowing out toward right will help these left-handed batters. Horton the lead. The pitch. Swung on and it's a foul ball. Hit past first base down into the corner. A foul ball hit by Northrop. Rhubarb as Mayo Smith comes out of the Tiger dugout and he's talking to the plate umpire. The ball hit fair, bounced past first base and hit foul. But the question is, was it fair when it passed the bag? Northrop, the left-handed batter, was looking right at it. He thought it was. The umpire said no, and it's two balls and a strike. A lot of people don't realize, Jack, that if that ball goes over any part of that bag, it does not have to hit in fair territory. As long as it goes over any part of that bag and hit in foul territory, it's still fair. Two balls and a strike to count to Jim Northrup. Horton with the lead. The pitch is made. It's a strike call on the outside corner of fastball. Two and two. Bailey Northrup says you put the jinx on him. Whenever you come here with the NBC game of the week, he never gets a hit. I was wondering if you heard that today. <laughs> Well, let's see what happens here. Two balls, two strikes. Jim steps out as Washburn started to work too quickly. Washburn steps back on. Horton takes the lead. And the 2-2 pitch is coming. Swung on. Popped up into right field. Maris is going to get it. Waits and has it for the second out. And Willie Horton back to first base. Northrop reached for the ball and sent a routine fly ball to Maris. With two outs, Bill Freehand comes up looking for his first hit of the series. He's a real favorite here in Detroit. Attended the University of Michigan. Just a few miles from this ballpark. From St. Petersburg, Florida. Horton on at first base, two out, no score. Second inning and Freehand held up on a half swing. Ball one. Freehand down at 263 during the year. 0 for 6 in the series. Full hitter, right-handed batter. Washburn checks the runner and delivers. It's low. Ball two. We're in the second inning, no score. They're two out, and the Tigers have Horton at first. Freehand will be gunning for one here on 2-0. and all. The pitch. High. Ball three. Looks like Don Wirt might be coming up in this inning. Three and nothing to freehand. And with Don Wirt coming up, was a 200 hitter this year. Don't be surprised if freehand swings at this one. The lead by Orton. The pitch is high. Ball four and freehand walk. Two walks by Whiteford in the inning. And Don Wirt comes up. He's a pesky little hitter with uh, batting average. He's not too proud of Peely. But with men on base here, Horton at second, three and at first, and anything can happen. I want to say one thing, Jack. You have a fellow that's following Don Ward hitting in that ninth spot who isn't a bad hitter. He just had seven home runs this year and batted in 17 runs. So Washburn is going to have to come to Don Ward, give him a ball to hit. Two on, two out, second inning, no score. Ball one, low outside. Carver yells something out to his pitcher Washburn before returning the ball. Tigers haven't had a hit. But they have their first scoring threat. First and second, two out. Wirt swings, pops it foul off to the left. Shannon coming over. So is McCarver. It's going to be out of play. The ball on the strike now. that protective flap over the left ear on his batting helmet. Looks a little strange. That takes a little getting used to. Looks a little strange, Jack, but uh, I think if I were playing today, I believe I would wear it. Attention plan being what it is, it's not a bad idea. Yes, sir. Two on, two out, no score, second inning. A ball and a strike on down, worth the pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's strike two. One of the few balls that Washburn is thrown by a hitter who's swinging. He's out in front of Wirt, one and two. Out 
field straight away, not too deep with this hitter up there. Fans flapping the hands, trying to get something started for the Tigers here in the second inning. The pitch from Washburn, and it's low. Two balls, two strikes. Word is capable of hitting home runs. He's had 45 of them during his major league career. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two out. The pitch is coming. Swung out and missed, and the curveball got it. Work. The top half of the third inning. TV Reese along with Jack Buck. The first hitter for the Cardinals will be Ray Washburn. Tell you all about it, Jack. Come on in here. Okay, B. We there haven't been any hits in this ball game. The Tigers have had two base runners, both on walks. Cardinals have had three base runners, all on walks. And Washburn comes up. Washburn is capable of hitting the ball. He's not considered to be a good hitting pitcher like Wilson. And he has hit home runs in the big leagues before. The pitch to him is a strike call. Earl Wilson on the mound, the Tiger right-hander. Matt Washburn has hit only one home run during his big league career. The pitch swung on, bouncing ball to short. Nicky Stanley with a big hop and throw. He is out with one go. Stanley throws on Washburn. With one out here in the top half of the third inning. No score. We continue to tell you about this ballpark for those of you who haven't visited Tiger Stadium. 340 down the line in left, 440 in straightaway center, 325 down the line in right. But the power alleys are very friendly for the hitters. The batter, Brock, walked, stole a base, and was out stealing in the first inning. Left-handed hitter takes the ball low. Third baseman downward has to play about five steps in front of the bag with Brock up there, although Lou doesn't bunt as often as you think he would. First baseman Cash is even with the bag, guarding against the drag bunt. The pitch from Wilson coming. Low again, ball two. And that's what Wilson doesn't want. If they're going to put Brock on, they want him to hit his way up. Keep him off altogether, of course, is their preference. If you walk a fellow like this, it's not like giving just one base. It's almost like walking a double. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the next one, and Brock swings and hits it over the pitcher's head. Tough play for Stanley. Up with the ball, throws. Hey! Lou Brock legs one out. As Stanley handled the ball quite well right in front of the second base bag. Got rid of it, but couldn't flag down Lou Brock, and there's the first hit of the series. Mickey Stanley, the shortstop, made a great play. I didn't think he'd make it as close as he did. He would have thrown anyone else out outside of Lou Brock. So Brock has the first hit in this ballgame. He has stolen four bases thus far, one of them today. He's on at first with one out, and the batter is Kurt Blood. Brock a lead. The pitch is high for ball one. In situations like this, too, many times the Cardinals tell Brock not to steal. In order to leave that hitting room for Kurt Flood, with Cash holding against the runner. And Kurt Flood can hit that ball in the right field. The entire right side of the infield is almost empty with McAuliffe near the bag at second. Brock a lead. He's going. The pick swung on and fouled by Flood. Brock was trying to steal, and Flood fouled it off, making it one and one. In the third inning, there's no score here in Detroit. First World Series game since 1945 in this Michigan City. And a good enough day weather-wise. About 55 degrees, sun shining. Earl Wilson, a 113 for the Tigers this year. In his first series game. Checks Brock, pitches, flood, takes it in the dirt. And a fine play by Bill Freehan who kept that ball in front of him. Two balls and a strike. Burn grounded out to start the inning. Brock got an infield to hit the first hit of the ball game. And now Earl Wilson is behind Kirk Flood. Two balls and a strike. No score, third inning. Brock takes the lead. A long look by Wilson. Brock is going. The pitch fouled again by Flood, and this one might be caught near the stands. It will be by Cash. He has it. 
With Brock running again, Flood had a ball to hit and fouled it, trying to go to right field. Norm Cash made the catch, threw out the batter, Maritz. And if Brock was trying to steal with one out, he surely would be trying to steal with two men gone. Well, it looks to me like, as you know and as I know, Brock is on his own. He can steal any time he wants to, except you told me. Occasionally, they give him a sign not to steal. That's the only time he doesn't run, do we? And uh, Red Sandys, as much as he can upset a ball club, I'm sure any time he gets on there, he's going as soon as he possibly can. Maris, who has fallen out on strikes his first time, waits at the plate. Brock is not going, and the pitch is low and away. Ball one to Roger Maris. Maris with two out in the first inning. Look to the third strike. They can call it the second baseman is a step into the outfield grass with Maris up there. They don't play Maris to pull as most ball clubs do. Brock a lead. Not going. Pitch strike called. One and one. Wilson got his slider in there. That's probably his best pitch, dude. Yes, I would say it is, and also his sinker ball. He can keep the ball down. He is tough. Maris waits. No score. Third inning. Rocket first. Two out. One ball, one strike to count to Roger. And the pitch from Wilson instead of throw the first and the runner is back. Wilson does not have a particularly good move to first. Rock a lead. He's going. Pitch fouled by Maris. Now he's in the hole one and two. Foul off the mask of the catcher Freon. So three different times now, Brock has tried to steal a base. And each time the hitter has fouled the pitch. Maybe he'll get tired. He's getting his road work into it. Northbrook. Straight away center field. K line off the line and right. Maris waits. Brock is not going. The pitch is low, and it is two and two. In the Tiger third inning, Earl Wilson will be leading off. What will the score be at that time? In the top of the third, nothing, nothing. Two balls, two strikes to Maris. Brock a lead. A leisurely toss over there by Earl Wilson. And Lou leads away again. Another quick throw. He's back in time. You can see there, Jack. He gave him his not his good move on the first one. But that one right there was the best move that you'll see of Earl Wilson. Another look over there by Wilson. Brock is going. The pitch is outside, and Brock is safe at second base. The ball was knocked out of the glove of Stanley, and Brock now has stolen five bases. His second in this game, and his fifth in the three games. He's at second with two out. Maris took ball three, and it's a full count of three and two. And Stanley had held that ball. Brock might have slid right into it, too, or was he there? I thought they would have had a chance if Stanley would have held on the ball. I thought Bill Freehand, as many times as they've gone to second and stolen second, I think that was Bill Freehand's best throw of the series. I agree with that. Brock ends up at second with two out and a 3 2 count on Maris, and the base hit would chase home the first run of the game, the pitch. Low ball four, and Cepeda comes up with two on, two out, and that is the fourth walk issue by Earl Wilson as Maris laid off the sinker ball. Freehand meets Wilson halfway to the mound. He'll have to pitch to Cepeda now. Orlando grounded out to short in the first inning, leaving a man on base. Cepeda takes a little time before coming up. We're watching him in batting practice. Really, he's still not hitting the ball like the Cepeda that you and I both knew. No, I saw him last year, and I said that I thought he was probably the best hitter in baseball. But this year, well, he's had a very weak year. He's batted 248 for him, and he's never had a good series. Two on, two out. The pitch to Cepeda from Wilson on the way, and it's low ball one. Brock is the runner at second base. Likely won't be going anywhere with two men out. On at first base, Maris. Outfield deeper on to the left for Cepeda. 
No score. Top half of the third inning. Wilson is ready. And here he comes. Up and in. Ball two. And Wilson is struggling. Rock got an infield hit with one out. The only hit of this game. For either club. And with two out, he has walked Maris after the stolen base by Brock. And now he's behind Cepeda, 2-0. Oh. Cepeda digging in, waiting. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled, and Cepeda had a good cut. The pitch was down from Wilson and was fouled up into the press box. He kept the bat loose that time. That's the best swing I've seen him have in a long time. One thing that used to amaze me about him, the way he would attack the ball, as I would say. He doesn't uh, he doesn't jerk at the ball, but just that front foot, when he decides to take his swing, he just dives in at the ball. He swings a big 40-ounce bat, and he awaits for the 2-1 delivery from Earl Wilson. Brock at second, Maris at first, two out. Third inning, no score. And the pitch to Cepeda is on the way. Swung on and missed. The breaking ball got him, two and two. Fool with the breaking ball, and the count goes to two and two. Wilson has struck out one, allowed one hit, and walked four. He would like to improve the totals in the strikeout department right here with Cepeda. Wilson taking plenty of time. Gets the sign from Bill Prehan, and he's ready. Here he comes. Swung on and tapped foul out in front of the plate. A lot of the fans in various portions of the ballpark couldn't see the ball and thought that Cepeda had panned. He barely got a piece of it, but still two and two. The third game of the World Series, one described by most as a pivotal game. trying to chase home the first run of the game and Earl Wilson trying to get him out. The 2-2 delivery coming. Swung on and a high fly ball into left center field. Should be caught. Back on the track is Horton. So is Northrop and Northrop makes the catch. Savannah fly to center. Cardinals lead two on. At the end of two and a half, they lose nothing. Detroit nothing. NBC has you at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Pee Reese alongside and I'm Jack Buck. The Tigers, no runs, no hits, no errors. The Cardinals, no runs, one infield hit, and no errors. And we go into the bottom of the third inning with Earl Wilson leading off. Tomorrow, Gibson and McLean in the fourth game of the series. And this place will be howling tomorrow, Pee-wee, as if it isn't today. Well, I'm just wondering if uh, the Tigers learned anything in that first game against Bob Gibson. I've talked to quite a few of them, and they do say that they're definitely not going to try to swing as hard as they did in that first game. Here's Earl Wilson, the Tiger pitcher, who this year hit seven home runs. During his lifetime career in the American League, he's hit 33 home runs. A strong right-handed batter and a full hitter. The pitch from Washburn is a curve in there and a call strike. Ray Washburn on the mound. He's allowed two base runners, both on walks and both in the second inning. Now we're in the last of the third, and there's no score. Wilson leading off. Strike call, the fastball at the letter, strike two. It will be Wilson, the call it, and Stanley in the Tiger third. Here's the next one. And it's high with a fastball. Wilson laid off. Ball one, one and two. Cardinal Outfield is playing Wilson with about as much respect as they show anybody. The pitch coming, curve, in there, called strike, he's out. Two strikeouts for Washburn as he got him with an off-speed curveball, which has been the pitch which has made Washburn so effective in the last part of this regular season. McCullough Theater grounded sharply to Cepeda his first time, and Orlando guards the line as the Tigers' second baseman steps in. McCullough has driven in two runs in the series. That on a base hit into center field. Outfield around to the right for him. The pitch is up and in, ball one. Ray Washburn, a right-hander on the mound for St. Louis. And McAuliffe at the plate. 
most people expected a high-scoring game today, but nothing doing so far. There's a breaking ball. Stays outside. And it's ball two. Breeze blowing toward right. The crowd trying to whoop it up. And the pitch coming to Dick McCullough. Strike called. A good fastball for Washburn. Two and one. Washburn now has two strikeouts in a row. He fanned work to end the second inning and got Wilson here at the start of the Tiger third. The 2-1 delivery on the way. High with the fastball. Makes the count to 3-1. Washburn has walked two. Has a 3-1 count on the hitter. Tony Cuccino coaching at third base for Detroit. And Wally Mose is at first. And I'm sure that McAuliffe has the green light in this situation. And here comes the 3-1 delivery. Swung on. Hit foul. Past the Cardinal dugout. Down into the right field corner. St. Louis is playing. Shannon at third. Maxwell at short. Javier at second. Cepeda at first. Brock in left. Flood in center. And Maris in right. A full count on the left-handed batter, Dick McCullough. Right-hander Washburn. After a long look. Goes to work. Here's the 3-2 delivery. Hit foul. A line drive down into the right field corner. The fans reach trying to get a World Series souvenir, but it's beyond their reach. It's snared by a member of the Cardinal bullpen crew. Still 3-2. And, and here McCarver chattering behind the plate. Here's the next delivery, and it's swung on. There's the first Tiger hit. A shot in the left. Fielded by Brock on two hops. McCulloch goes part way to second, but comes back. McCulloch single in the left center field with one out. Each team has a base hit in the ball game now. McCulloch is on at first. He's about the fastest of the Tiger runners. On at first with one gone, and the batter is Mickey Stanley. Jack, I think Ray Washburn thought he had a call up set up then. After a 3 and 1 pitch, he threw him a slider. 3 and 2 pitch, he threw him a curveball. He thought he could throw that fastball by him, but didn't. They pitch out, but McCullough is not going. Ball one to Stanley. He's a neighborhood boy from Birmingham, Michigan. Runner at first base. One out here in the Tiger third, no score. Mickey Stanley at the plate, grounded the second his first time. The pitch on the way, and he swings and misses, and what a cut he is. Stanley took the best cut of the ball game so far. He was going for downtown with that one. A ball and a strike. That was a letter I fastball that Washburn got by him. Outfield around to the left. Call up the lead off first. The pitch is made. Swung on. Double play ball. Hit two out of the air. Boots it. Goes the first. Out at first. And McCall up to save at second. Out of the air. Booted a potential double play ball. Then had to go to first to get Stanley. And Al Kaline comes up with a runner at second and two out. Do you think they would have had two had he handled the ball cleanly, do we? Well, of course, I've seen Javier and Maxwell make that double play so many times. And they're very quick. But Javier, knowing that McAuliffe, who has good speed going in the second, wanted to get the ball to Javier with something on it in a hurry. And he also knew that Stanley, the hitter, can fly down that first baseline, and I think he tried to throw the ball before he caught it. McAuliffe is on at second base. And Al Kaline, who flied to left his first time, is the batter. He has a chance to put the Tigers out and butt in the smallest third inning. The first pitch. Swung on, and he missed the curveball. And he was trying to make it to the middle. In the last five weeks of the season, K-Line batted 368. So he is carrying a hot hand coming into the series. He waits for Washburn. Here it comes. Fastball. Strike ball. It appeared that K-Line... And his mind made up, he was going to get another breaking ball. Well, Jack Bob Gibson told me the other day that when Kaline is at bat with runners on base, he looks for the curveball. 
and uh, they're going to try to pitch him a fastball with man on. Let's see if they do. Oh, and to the count, curve in the dirt as Washburn wasted one, making it one and two. McAuliffe was singled and advanced to second on an infield out. Is that second with two out here in the bottom of the third inning and no score? Kaline the batter. Washburn out in front of him, one and two. Outfield deep to the left as Kaline waits. And the pitch coming is a fastball, and it barely missed, and the Cardinals thought they had him struck out. McCarver tried to flatten the ball with his fist, and Washburn took a step off the mound and a look in at the play umpire, Stan Landis. It's two and two now. That was the fastball that Pee-wee referred to, but he didn't get the strike. Here it comes. Curve. There it goes. Two to nothing, Detroit. Not a good curveball for Washburn. A good curveball for Kalon. I'll say. Two to nothing, Detroit. They've made two runs and two hits. Washburn does not have a great propensity for throwing home run balls. Kalon got to him that time. During the year, Washburn allowed only nine home runs, and he pitched a lot of innings. Norm Cash takes a changeup outside. Ball two, two, one. With one out in this Tiger third of a scoreless game, Wilson struck out. McAuliffe singled solidly to left. Stanley grounded out. The Cardinals missed the double play, and then Kaline Homer. Cash hits a ground ball to second. Javier has to come fast. Up throws. Good play. He got him. He's out. The inning is over. Detroit jumps out in front. At the end of three innings, a score. The Tigers two. The Cardinals nothing. This is the fourth inning now. A 2-0 ball game, Detroit. McCarver leading off for the Cardinals. Earl Wilson on the mound and here to bring you the play-by-play. Former Dodgers shortstop, Huey Reese. Thank you very much, Jack. For the top half of the fourth inning, we have seen some of the Cardinals' speed. Ball hit hard. Foul down at first baseline. McCarver. Getting a little bit too much out in front of that ball. Al Kaline has shown the Tiger power as he hit a home run in the left field stand with McAuliffe on base to put the Tigers out in front here in the bottom half of the third inning. Earl Wilson will try to hold it. And McCarver trying to start things off for the Cardinals in the top half of the fourth inning. That ball just missed outside. One ball and one strike. McCarver will be followed by Shannon and Javier. The attendance today, 53,634. A nice crowd on hand to see this third game of the World Series. A foul right straight back over our head. McCarver hit 253 during the regular season. Lifetime World Series play, 278. He's one for seven in the series. In the second inning, he fought out to center field. Here's Wilson's pitch. A line drive, a base hit out in the right field. Al Kaline to go over to cut that ball off. McCarver makes the turn. The throw comes in at Stanley at shortstop. And Kaline, you can hear the people yell. Kaline fired that ball on the line to Stanley at short. So the Cardinals have a base runner on at first. Really, the opposition doesn't do much running on any of these Tiger outfielders. K-Line has one of the real great arms in baseball. I'm talking about K-Line. He did 174 home runs in his career at this ballpark. Plus one today makes it 175. Mike Shannon. 
Takes the first pitch, a low sinker by Earl Wilson. Two low ball one. Shannon checking with the coach, Joel Schultz, at third base. Coaching in first base for the Cardinals, Dick Sisler. The son of the great George Sisler. One ball, no strike. Here's the pitch. Shannon started. Checked his swing on a curveball. It's low and outside, ball two. The Tigers, two. The Cardinals, nothing in the third game of this 1968 World Series. Tomorrow, Sunday, it'll be Bob Gibson against Denny McLean. Hope that you can be with us. Jack Buck and I'll be right back here. Game time. 12.45, Eastern Daylight Time. Curveball, inside, ball three. And Earl Wilson wanted that one. Three and O's, a count on Mike Shannon. McCarver on at first. Norm Cash holding close. McAuliffe over close to the bag at second. Stanley a couple of steps toward third. Fastball inside. Ball four. And Wilson had a little control problem today. That's his fifth base on ball. Phil, he is not that uh, sort of pitcher ordinarily. I know that he depends on uh, his good fastball and slider and keeping it on the corners. He doesn't walk that many, but today, five walks. Jack, you say is maybe in a series like this, they may be trying to be just a little bit too fine? It appears that way, for he walked only 65 during the regular season while striking out 168. Javier, the runners on first and second. McCarver on at second. Shannon on at first. There's no one away. We're in the top half of the fourth inning here at Tiger Stadium. Wilson checks McCarver at second. Here's the pitch. McCarver way out in front of that curveball. Looks to me like he was looking for a fastball. Javier is that kind of hitter, Pee If he's uh, looking for a particular pitch, he can look as bad as anybody can at the plate. On the other hand, he has power, particularly in a ballpark like this. And I know the people might be getting weary of us saying a ballpark like this, but this ballpark was built for a hitter. And here's a fellow that's been real tough in World Series play. 375 lifetime average in series. During the season, Earl Wilson talking about his control. Five base on balls with his high. Third ball. Going outside, ball one. And Javier, as Jack told you, he loves left-handers. Right-handers give him just a little bit more trouble. He's tough in the clutch. He's checking with Joel Schultz. Down at third base. McCarver on at second. Shannon on at first. Two to nothing, the Tigers over the Cardinals. We're in the top half of the fourth inning. Wilson sets, looks back at McCarver. Here's the pitch. Swing it in, strike two. Jack talking about Bob Gibson telling me that Al Kaline looks for a curveball with men on base. Evidently, Ray did not read the report. I think you knew about it. Gibson knew about it, and Washburn didn't. Gibson should have told Washburn instead of the Way. Of course, he just can't keep standing out there throwing a man a fastball all day. The curveball, as Jack told you, was a little bit high. Ray wanted it down a little bit more, low and outside. Here's the pitch to Javier. Just missed. Two balls, two strikes. The Cardinals have no runs. They have two hits. They have not made an error. The Tigers have two runs on, two hits, a home run for Al Kaline with the call up on. Javier calls time, goes over to Dal Maxwell in the on deck circle, gets a little pine tar and puts it on his back. Earl Wilson getting a few practice throws. The count is two and two on Javier, there's no one away. McCarver on at second. Shannon on at first. Wilson asks for the count from Stan Lennis, who's behind home plate umpire today. Pat Dobson, the right-hander, starting to warm up in the Tiger bullpen. Wilson, the stretch to pitch. Going outside, ball three. Three and two, the count on Javier. 
You're talking about Maris uh, not striking out earlier when there was a comparable situation. Now, Javier does strike out quite a bit, particularly against uh, right-handed pitchers. So it'll be interesting to see if McCarver and Shannon do any running here. I saw McCarver checking with Joe Schultz at third. So did Javier. There's no one away. The count is three and two. Let's see if McCarver goes. He did not go. The pitch is in there. All strike three. He struck him out. dugout is all over the plate umpire Stan Landis about the call third strike to Javier was unhappy about the call Cardinals going into this inning had left four men on base well but it's the same situation they had a while ago with Roger Maris up there if they would have sent McCarver then it would have definitely been a double play so Red Shandy wisely did not send McCarver so the runners are still on first and second. Shannon on at first, McCarver on at second. Dow Maxwell, the hitter. He fired after the left. There goes the runners. Look out. Bill Free and throws the die work. They got him. Joe Schultz is holding his third. And so is McCarver. Here comes Red Shandy's out of the dugout. The Cardinals. Now, let's call 30 seconds for station identification. Well, here's what happened. With McCarver on at second, Red Shandy is just have to having a say with the third base on Bob Bill Heller. With McCarver on second, Shannon on third. Javier had just got through striking out. We were talking about them not sending the runners. So on the first pitch to Dow Maxwell, Red Shandy elects to try the double steal. McCarver, a catcher, has better than average speed tried to steal third, but freehand threw him out on a close play at third, and we had a little argument about the Thug base coach Joel Schultz and McCarver, the catcher. But it's all over with now. It's two away. Dal Maxwell is hitter, and Mike Shannon on in second. The score, the Tigers two, the Cardinals nothing win the top half of the fourth inning. Earl Wilson for the Tigers. Ray Washman for the Cardinals. The one and all pitch. Foul straight back makes the count one and one. Well, we've had some action in this one, have we, Billy? I guess more action in this game than in any of the other previous games. Bob Gibson dominated in the one, and Mickey Lolich and the Tigers took care of the other, but a little back and forth in this game, although the Tigers are the only ones that scored two to nothing here in the fourth inning. Well, the Cardinals have the reputation of being a running ball club, and they keep doing it. One ball, one strike on Dal Maxwell. The pitch, it's inside. Ball two. To repeat what you said earlier, though, the last couple of throws by Freehan, he's shown us something better than he had previously. He looked like he was just a little bit too anxious in that first game. Of course, I guess when you get a block on there, it makes you a little anxious. You want to get to that ball a little too fast sometimes. Of course, if you don't get it out of there in a hurry, you have no chance to throw him out. Two balls, one strike. Earl Wilson kicks. Here's the pitch. Ball hit hard. Wilson knocks the ball down. He can't find it. Now he does. Flip the ball over the mound. And that ball for Dow Maxwell and the Cardinals in the top half of the fourth inning. After three and a half innings of play, it's the Tigers two and the Settlers, Cardinals nothing. The Cardinals have now left five men on base in that fourth inning. McCarver singled, Shannon walked. Javier was called out on strikes. McCarver was thrown out trying to steal, and then Earl Wilson took a base hit away from Maxville with a fine fielding play. And so the Tigers still have that two nothing lead. As we go into the bottom of the fourth inning, and back we go to Pee Wee Reese. Jack, just ask you one more question. One thing about this ball, Cardinal Ball Club, even though they do get thrown out, they do not stop running, do they? No, they're not uh, easily intimidated. They know uh, who can do what because the ball club has been together for quite a while. And Shane Heaps, uh, although he is conservative, in fact, we've seen very few uh, Selman double steals following the Cardinals all year long. He likes the element of surprise, but he never stops trying to surprise the opposition. Thank you, Jack. Willie Hart putting things off for the Tigers in the bottom half of the fourth inning as the Tigers lead in this game by a score of 2 to nothing on Al Kaline's home run in the bottom half of the third inning. Ray Washburn into the windup, the kick. That's ball too high, ball one. Defensively for the Cardinals, Cepeda at first base, Javier at second, Maxwell at short, Shannon at third. In the outfield, Brock, Flood, and Maris. Curveball, hit foul down the third baseline, and the count is one ball and one strike. 
McCarver doing the catching, and Ray Washburn. The pitching for the Cardinals. Washburn was 14 and 8 on the year. He does not have an overpowering fastball. Good curve, slider, and relies a lot on control. But although I will say, Jack, I've seen him throw two or three real good fastballs today. And he's able to reach back and uh, get a good one when he needs it. And, he, and his fastball moves quite a bit, so he's not afraid to throw it. But he had a much better fastball until he hurt his arm a couple of years ago. He surely did. He was a fastball pitcher exclusively at that time. The two and one pitch to Willie Hart. It's too high. Ball three. count of three balls and one strike on him. Jim North up in the on-deck circle. Here comes the pitch. That's ball. One hopper to Mike Shannon to third base. The throw with his potato, and that's all for Willie Hart. So after getting behind in a hole, Ray Washburn retires the power slugger. Willie Hart. And talking about the control of Ray Washburn, very good. 1968, walking an average of two batters every nine innings. Jim Northrup. He flat out to right field his first time up, takes the best ball inside. Bottom half the fourth inning. Tiger Stadium, Detroit, Michigan, the third game of the World Series. Fastball outside. Two balls, no strikes on Jim Northrup. Too high, ball three. Northrop, one for the one for eight. He's one for nine now in the series. On the year he hit 264. Good power. He had 21 home runs. 90 runs batted in. And he went for that three and old pitch as Mayo Smith gave him the green light. And he was going for the long one. And he had his pitch. But fouled it off. The count is now three and one. It's one away. McCarver gives him the sign. Washburn, the kick. Ball hit out into the left field. Should be no trouble for Lou Brock. He's underneath it and takes it for out number two. So it's two up and two down here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Bill Freehand stepping in there. Freehand in the second inning. Base on ball. Ray Washburn almost nicked Bill Freehand with that slow curve. And that would not be anything unusual for Bill Freehand. He holds the Tiger record, the all time record for being hit with, by a pitch ball. Here's a one and pitch. It's a fastball. High and outside ball two. Count on Bill Freehand. Washburn into the windup. Fastball right in there for call strike one. Kirk Flood in center field pulled over a little bit in left center. Lou Brock over close to the line. They play Freehand as a pull hitter. He did pull it, but he popped it up. Knocks for the shortstop going back. Brock coming in, and Brock calls for it. And takes it for the third out. And that's all for Freehand. That's all for the Tigers here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. So the score after four full innings, the Tigers two and the Cardinals nothing. We're going into the fifth inning of this ball game, and Ray Washburn will be the leadoff hitter for the Cardinals, who make no move to the contrary. So Washburn will lead off. Brock and Flood will follow. Cardinals have had men on base in every inning of the game. The first two walked in the first. One man was left on. In the second inning, a two-out walk. In the third inning, they're two on, two out with Cepeda up there, but the Cardinals failed to score. Single by McCarver and a walk to Shannon in the fourth inning. And a man was out stealing and yet another left on, so the Cardinals have stranded five. Meanwhile, the Tigers have had only two scoring opportunities, and they cashed in 
on one of them. In the second, two on, two out. The number eight hitter up there, and the Tigers left two on when Don Wirt struck out. But then in the third, with one out, Dick McAuliffe singled, and with two out, Al Kaline hit a 2-2 pitch for a home run. And so it's two to nothing, as Pee Wee Reese tells you about the fifth inning. All right, Jack. Ray Washburn. Letting the Cardinals off here in the top half of the fifth inning. That's what he did in the third inning. As he grounded out to the shortstop, Mickey Stanley. Washburn all the way for the Cardinals. Earl Wilson, of course, all the way for the Tigers. Two to nothing. The Tigers over the Cardinals. The first pitch to Washburn, a fastball in there for call strike one. has walked five and struck out two. Here's the pitch. A fastball. Looks like he was trying to put a little too much on that one. The Tigers have two runs on two hits. The Cardinals have no runs on two hits. One ball, one strike on Ray Washburn. The batter is now in the shadows and the pitcher is in the sun. A fastball in there for a call strike two. See, well, that's the first time you mentioned... Uh... The shadows, the hitters, even the umpires say it's difficult to pick up that ball at home plate along about this time of day. It's not tough enough to hit that ball. <laughs> a one and two pitch. That's all right, that and then Washburn did not like the call. And I don't think he'll win that argument. He's still saying something to Stan. And Landis, the umpire behind home plate. Mr. Landis thinks that mask off. Look out. He's been taking a whipping today. The, uh, both the Cardinals and the Tigers have been on him a little bit. Boy, it's a tough job, especially here in the series when everybody's paying attention to everything that happens down there in the field. Well, let's see if the Tigers can keep Brock off base this time. <laughs> well, he's been on twice. He walked in the first inning and singled in the third inning. There's a ball right back through the middle, and they cannot do it, Jack. Jim Nossif up with the ball. Brock making the turn at first. Well, let's see what's happened to Brock. He stole a base in the first inning. Stole one in the third. He now has five stolen bases in this series. This is an interesting situation, Pee Wee, where the Cardinals trailing two to nothing and flood up there with that hitting room through the right side that we were talking about earlier. For now, if Brock does get thrown out, well, then they'd take the Cardinals out of the inning. So we'll see if he goes or not. Does Brock ever get thrown out? Oh, yes, he does, and I'm sure that the Tigers might be pitching out here. See if they can keep him. Brock moving around at first base, trying to bother Earl Wilson. Here's the pitch, and there he goes, and the fastball, three hands throw. He's safe. Well, that's six. Three today. Three before today. Well, that's how uh, confident that guy is, Billy, because... You just don't run when you trail two to nothing and you got a hitter like Flood up there. Well, he didn't take long, did he? Well, I tell you, I know that uh, he told me before the game that he has Wilson figured with regard to his move to first base. Kirk Flood's a hitter. A swing and a miss. Strike one. Earl Wilson is a big fella. He's 6'3". Weighs 215 pounds. He has a fairly quick move to first base. But once he decides to take that ball home, he doesn't get rid of it too fast. And Brock, I'm sure he knows this. One ball, one strike on foot. Here's the pitch. The fastball right down in there for call strike two. I think Wilson, after the uh, first couple of innings now, Billy, has a good slider going for him. That's what he got Washburn on on strikes. He's out in front of uh, Flood, and because of that, now his fastball has started to be effective for him. Well, I've seen him pitch two or three games this year, and if he's right, he's tough to beat. He's had a lot of injuries. He injured his heel, hit twice for batted balls, hurt his left knee in fielding a ground ball. Brock has tied another record. You know, watching him may break it right here. 
Stanley breaking it back of Brock. Wilson looking back there. Kurt Butter with one ball, two strikes. Wilson, here's the pitch. Line drive, base hit. Out in the left field. That ball may be in there for extra bases. Here comes Brock in to score the first run for the Cardinals. And moving in the second base with a stand-up double, Kurt Flood. Everybody ever make a move. Stanley was getting back to short. Brock was taking his lead. Flood must have stood at the plate for about 30 seconds while Earl Wilson was checking him out. I thought surely the Flood would call time and step off, but instead he got the double and drove home the first Cardinal run. He's the tying run and nails Smith to the mound, although there is no one throwing at the moment in the Detroit bullpen. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. W we said earlier that there was no one throwing in the Tiger bullpen, but now there is. Pat Dobson, a right-hander, is up and throwing for the second time. Mayo Smith talked to his pitcher, and now he's in a discussion, and it appears to be a uh, friendly one, with the plate umpire, Stan Landis. And now Landis goes out to the pitcher's mouth. The Tiger scoring took place in the third inning, and a base hit by McCollop and a home run by Kaline. Tigers two runs on two hits. The Cardinals have out hit Detroit four to two, and St. Louis just scored their first run. Washburn struck out to start the inning. Brock single stole his third base of the day to tie a series record, three thefts in one game, and Flood doubled him home. And now Maris and Cepeda will have a chance to even up the score. Put away. First run down at second. Roger Maris the batter. The now by a Harold Wilson looking back at Flood. Stanley checking the runner. Fastball just missed outside. And Mayo Smith out to talk to Wilson. Looks to me like he's feeling his right leg like he has a muscle pull on that right leg. I thought it may be, Jack, that Mayo Smith is out to tell Wilson, don't worry too much about that man at second base. But he kind of, it, I think it did mess up his timing. A fastball outside, ball two. On the other hand, Flood, who's on at second base now, uh, does not run in the fashion or style or as often as Blue Brock. And with Maris Mensapeta coming up, he won't be going anywhere here in this fifth inning. Man, I'm telling you that Brock can really upset a ball club. How he loves to run and can run. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside, ball three. Well, the way Smith has been hitting, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe this is another thing that Mayo Smith was talking to uh, Wilson about, not to get Maris anything too good to hit and not really worry too much if he walks him because he's going to have the chance for the double play. Also because Roger Maris has been in six World Series and he's hit six home runs. So he's tough and they did not want him to swing that bat there. So well, here comes Mayo Smith. Out of the dugout. That's the uh, sixth walk given up by Earl Wilson, and I don't think the Tiger manager is going to go any further with him, and Wilson is teased with himself that he uh, didn't show better stuff, and he's not going to get a chance to show any more stuff today. He's coming out. And Pat Dobson, right-hander, is going to take over here in relief. He'll inherit a situation with Flood at second base, Maris at first, one man out, Orlando Cepeda coming up. Cardinals 1-4-0 on the totals and trailing in the game as the Tigers have 2-2-0. Two, two Pat Dobson into the contest. While we're in the top half of the fifth inning, we have runners on first and second. Flood down at second. Roger Maris on at first. One run already in. And Lou Buck. There's one away, Orlando Cepeda, the hitter, the new pitcher, Pat Dobson. He is now checking with Bill Freehand for his sign. Flood moves off second. Roger Maris about three steps off first. Moves up a little bit. Here's the pitch. That's for foul tip, strike one. Now, Jack, you and I were talking about Orlando Cepeda, about the trouble he's been having this year. I don't think he hits that ball out to right center and right field with power like he used to. It looks to me like he's trying to pull that ball. All right, that's where he lost the points on his batting average after being the most valuable player in the National League last year. No balls, one strike. Cepeda 
That ball is caught in looking. Two strikes up. You know, from a Tiger viewpoint, he's a good man to have up there with regard to the double play, see we? Because he doesn't run as uh, fast as some, and he hits the ball sharply. But Dobson might get out of the center. Talking about the double play. Talking about the double play. Defensively for the Tigers, Cash at first. McAuliffe at second. Stanley at short. Don Ward at third. Pat Dobson shakes his head. Didn't want that one. Now Bill Freehand gives him it over. He looks back at Flood, and here's a pitch. Fastball, and it's popped up. Bill Freehand flips it, masked away from Takes it to foul character for out number two. He got a big man, and we were talking about the fact that he was in his first World Series game, so he didn't bother him, did it? Doesn't seem to me like he's nervous at all. He got one tough man out, Orlando Cepeda. Still has one more to go. In Tim McCarver, the catcher. He flat out to center field, got a base hit in the fourth inning. Was thrown out, trying to steal third on a double steal. Dobson, here's the pitch. Fastball, inside, ball one. Reese, you called a turn on Wilson. They gave Dobson some extra warm-up pitches because Wilson departed with a physical ailment. We'll have to get more details on that later on. Kurt Flood on at second. Roger Maris on at first. It's two away. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. And the Cardinals trail two to one. Jim McCarver with that closed stance of his. Dobson looks back at Flood. Here's the pitch. Ball hit out in the left field. That ball could be trouble. Look out. It's going foul. Kurt Flood going back to second. Roger Maris back to first. Roger Maris, who does not have too much speed, Trying to get a real good jump off of first. Tim McCarver. The count of one ball and one strike on him. Pat Dobson in relief of Earl Wilson. Taking a little time, trying to get out of this jam. Here's the one and one pitch. Fastball fouled off the right over the Cardinal dugout. Makes the count one ball and two strikes. Dobson up to this point. This little pressure kettle here has looked kind of cool. He's ahead of Tim McCarver right now. One ball and two strikes. It's two away. Willie Harton moved a little bit over toward the left field line. Jim Northrup planning straight away in center field. Al Kaline stops straight away in right field. McCarver backs out of there. Stan Lennis calls time. Now then McCarver backs out of there again. Now then Dobson wants freehand to give... The sign is again. He's already forgotten what he was supposed to throw. One ball, two strikes. He looks at thought. Here's the pitch. Curveball in the dirt. Makes the count two and two. At home plate right now. You could be seeing two of the finest catchers in baseball. Jim McCarver, the hitter, and Bill Freehand doing the catching. Two balls, two strikes, two away. Two men on. Dobson looks at Bud. Here's the pitch. Ball hit out in the right field. Al Kaline going back. That ball could be gone. It's a home run for Jim McCarver.
With the count two and two on Tim McCarver, and what a greeting he's getting in that Cardinal dugout. Flood on it second, Maris on it first, and it looked to me, Jack, like that was a pretty good pitch. It looked to me like it was about six inches off the ground, and McCarver lifted that ball right in the right field seat. Right, it was that. We got a good look at it, and I'm sure the Dobson will say it was a good pitch until it was hit. Shannon up there now, and the first pitch to him was the ball, but McCarver went down and got that ball, and he lofted it into the upper deck, off the line, maybe 50 feet, and that's this ballpark for you. The Cardinals, all of a sudden, after trailing two to nothing, are on top, four to two. Ball hit hard, off stop to the base hit out in the center field. Jim Nossop up with the ball, making the turn at first, Mike Shannon. We still have Don McMahon, the veteran relief pitcher, throwing in the bullpen of the Tigers. right now is Javier. He's walked and he struck out. Dobson's first pitch is on a fastball. Son on a miss. Strike one. The last uh, series home run that McCarver hit was a very historic one in World Series play, Billy. Really. Yeah, it certainly was. That was in 1964 against the Yankees with two men on in the 10th inning. That's a pretty good spot. He had quite a series then, didn't he, Jack? He surely did. That home run won one of the three games that Gibson won in 1964. One ball, one strike on Javier. Two away. Dobson in the relief of Earl Wilson as he had to leave the ball game. I think because of a full muscle in his right leg. Mike Shannon on it first. Here's the pitch. Foul straight back. Strike two. Tomorrow, Sunday, it will be Bob Gibson against Denny McLean. Gibson, who set up World Series strikeout record in the first game, striking out 17. He's going against Denny McLean, who won 31 games during the regular season. One ball, two strikes on Javier. Shannon moves off first. Little low and outside. Ball two. So Dobson. Coming in here with one away. Quickly got rid of Orlando Cepeda. Big fourth place hitter. Got ahead of McCarver. Then he ran the count two and two, but McCarver hit a home run in the... Right field seat. There's a fly ball out of the center field. Should be no trouble for Jim Northup. And that's all for Javier, and that's all for the Cardinals. But they came up with four big runs during the top half of the fifth inning. So after four and one half innings of play, it's the Cardinals four and the Tigers two. We're at Tiger Stadium going into the Tiger fifth inning, and the Cardinals are out in front of Detroit by the score of four to two. In the Cardinal fifth inning, Washburn struck out. Brock singled, stole his third base of the ball game. A double by Flood sent him home. The first Cardinal run, making it 2-1 to one for K-Line at Homer in the third inning with a man on. When Maris walked, Earl Wilson departed. Pat Dobson came in, got Cepeda. McCarver hit the three-run homer. Shannon singled. Javier flied out to end the fifth. Four runs, four hits, no errors, one left. Cardinals have left six men. And the Tigers have left two. Tigers bat in the bottom of the fifth. McMahon still throwing in the bullpen, indicating they might have a pinch hitter. After Don Wirt, and here again is Pee Reeks. Thank you, Jack. Wirt leading things off. The Tigers, the bottom half of the fifth inning. The first pitch by Ray Washman is too high. Ball one. And as Jack told you, we may see a pinch hitter for Pat Dobson here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Mayo Smith may want to go to John McMahon. The veteran lead pitcher for the Tigers. He's standing with that one. Javier, he didn't see the ball. He put it on the shot hop, but he still threw him out. Looking out at Javier. He's holding his glove up in front of his face, and now then, Cepeda has gone in to get the sunglasses. 
Now they want the sunglasses after the uh, horse almost got out of the barn. The ball was hit off the end of the bat, and a broken bat popped fly by Don Wirt. Javier broke back on it and then had to come in and field it on the short hop and throw to Cepeda for the out. And now we're going to have a pinch hitter. Tom Matchett is going to bat for Dobson, and McMahon will pitch the sixth inning to the Cardinals. For a minute, I thought I'd lost the base runner. I thought he was trapping the ball. Jack? I thought I lost my eyesight for a while when he broke back on it. We had a better look at it than he did. <laughs> we were not looking in the sun. Ray Washburn pitching to pinch hitter Tom Matching. A swing and a miss, strike one. This little fellow a couple of years ago in spring training hit about 478, did not make the club. Last year, he did not have a good spring training, and he made the club. Curveball swung on and fouled down the first baseline over Coach Wally Moses' head. Strike two. Magic hit one of the most dramatic home runs during the year for the Tigers, the pinch hitter. The next innings against the Baltimore Orioles in one of the key games when the Orioles and Tigers were really going at it. Yes, sir. Jack, I was here. It was on a Friday night, and I saw the game. Two strike pitch. Fastball on a good one. High and inside, ball one. The Tigers have two runs on only two hits. A home run by Al Kaline. The Cardinals have four runs on six hits. Fastball inside, ball two. So quickly, after getting two strikes on Magic, Washburn comes back with two balls, trying to get that fastball high and inside on Magic. McCarver giving the sign. Washburn. Staring down. He's ready. Curveball. Too low. Ball three. See, we all know Washburn is ahead in the game. 4-2 here in the fifth inning. He's allowed only two hits. His control is not nearly as good as we've seen him display in the past. And he's upset with himself that he's not getting the ball over. Three and two pitch on its way. And he struck him out. That's the third strikeout for Ray Washburn. And that's the same pitch that Washburn threw Magic. And they got two quick strikes on him. He had to go to three and two before he finally got Magic to swing at it. So that makes two away. Brings up. Tim McDonough. Dick McDonough, sorry. Got a base hit in the third inning. Fastball too high, ball one. Tomorrow it'll be Gibson against Danny McLean. Game time, 12.45 p.m. Right here at Tiger City. Hope you can be with us. Curveball in there for call strike one. And that's the way Washburn pitches. He mixes the pitches up. Curveball, sliders, occasional fastball, high and tight. He never gives in to the hitter. Here's the one and one pitch. A good swing, foul tip, hit McGarver right in the mask. Kind of shook him up a little bit. Yesterday, game time. Tomorrow will be 1 o'clock. We come on the air at 12.45. Eastern Daylight Time. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Fastball just missing. Makes the count two and two. If you've noticed, Washburn getting ahead of the hitters. Then trying to make him go for that bad pitch. Curveball way out for the home plate. Hey, Here, that was a uh, thrilling moment. A day game out of Candlestick Park on the 18th of September when we saw Washburn throw that no hitter against the Giants right after Gaylord Perry had pitched one the night before. Back to back. Here's the 3-2 pitch. That ball hits hard out of the right field. 
That ball is gone way up in the upper deck right there. Mickey Stanley, curveball, in there for call strike one. So the Tigers make it four to three. K-Line's home run in the third inning. Now McCollum hits one here in the bottom of the fifth. Fastball too high. Ball one, one ball and one strike, two away. Well, the Tigers, they we have hit five home runs in the last two games after being blanked by Bob Gibson. They're everything that people said they were, aren't they? Yes, they are. One ball, one strike on Stanley. Fastball, too high. Ball two. Red Shandy's moving around in that Cardinal dugout. Two ball, one strike, fit. Curveball just got the outset on a two and two. Now we see some fellows going down to the bullpen. Ron Willis, right hander, is going to warm up the single. Curveball just missed. Just a little bit outside, makes the count three and two. So Ray Washburn. Went to three and two on Magic, struck him out. Three and two on McCollum, he had a home run. He's now three and two on Mickey Stanley. Here's Freddie, here's the pitch. Her ball. High inside, foul back. Steve Carlton, the left-hander. Ron Willis, the right-hander. Throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. And Don McMahon, the right-hander for Detroit, getting ready to come into the game in the sixth. hits a lot of balls in the right field. He's capable of hitting home run. He had 11 home runs on the year. Ball hit off of Washburn's shoe. Over to Cepeda. He stepped on the bag and takes it himself. Tough break for Mickey Stanley, but that's all for Stanley and all for the Tigers during the bottom half of the fifth inning. They scored one run. So the score after five full innings, the Cardinals four and the Tigers three. Three seconds for station and then a At Tiger Stadium, the score four to three, an action-packed third game of the 1968 World Series. We're going to the sixth inning. Don McMahon comes into pitch, and Pee-wee Reese will tell you about him. In that Tiger fifth inning, Ray Washburn got the first two, including the pinch hitter Tom Magic, and then Dick McAuliffe hit a home run. It was his second base hit of the ball game. Then Stanley wrapped one back to the mound that surely would have been a base hit, but it was off Washburn's shins and bounced right over to Zepeda for the out. That would have been interesting, uh, Pee-wee, with. Stanley on base and K-Line, who had homered earlier, coming up to the plate, representing the lead run. It would have been more excitement, but Stanley got a tough break on the ball. Now, how about McMahon? We've known him for a long time, haven't we? Yes. In fact, I uh, hit against this fellow. I'm not saying that he's that old or I'm that young or what it is. 38. <laughs> Don McMahon, he's 38 years old. This is his eighth series game. Six of them he played with the Braves in 1957-58. But this is his first game of this series. In the year, on the year, he had five and two records. And a good earn run average, 1.98. Well, the Tigers trail four to three. We're in the top half of the sixth inning. Dow Maxwell, the first hitter for the Cardinals. Don McMahon's first pitch to Maxwell. A fastball, low and outside, ball one. Ball hit 
off the right side of the infield. McAuliffe up at the ball, flips the ball over to Cash, and that's all for Maxwell. When I hit against Don McMahon, who's now pitching for the Tigers, he was primarily a fastball pitcher and had a good one. But I understand now that he throws a sinker quite a bit. Keeps the ball down. Still has a good fastball. Ray Washburn. The pitcher for the Cardinals, the hitter. Ray is grounded out and struck out. This is his third time up. McMahon into the windup. Here's the pitch. Fastball, hot inside, ball one. McMahon, the pitch. Ball hit out in the right field. Al Kalon puts down his glasses right there and picks it. For out number two. Denny McLean in the first game. Now here he is in the third game, pitching to Lou Brock with two away. That ball in there for call strike one. Brock has walked, single in the third, single in the fifth, and every time he's been on, he's stolen the base. That ball in there for call strike two. We've talked about it so much, even before the series started. And Jack Buck, who has seen this fellow for so many times, he must keep this man off of the sacks and expect to beat this Cardinal ball club. I think it's worthwhile pointing out that the, the Cardinals didn't score in this game until Brock got on base for the third time in that fifth inning. He really motivates this ball club. One ball, two strikes on Brock. Can he score around? Yes, sir. He struck him out. He got a fat. He foul tipped the ball down his head. And that's all for Brock, and that's all for the Cardinals here in the top half of the season. After five and a half innings of play, it's the Cardinals four, the Tigers three. To the bottom of the sixth inning, the Tigers have made three runs and three hits. They've hit two home runs. One by K-Line with a man on, one by McCulloch. Cardinals have made four runs on six hits and leave four three. Three of the runs on a home run by McCarver and a lot of noise as Al Kaline steps in and you hear from Bailey Reed. Okay, Jack, bottom half of the sixth inning. Al Kaline stepping in there. He'll be followed by Norm Cash and Willie Harkin. Wide out to left and hit a home run in the left field seat in the third inning with McCullough on. Washburn in the wind up the kick. Fastball high outside as Kaline made a bluff the front as Shannon was about four steps in back of the bag. I don't think he really wants to. He just wants to get Shannon in a little bit more. Shannon does move in. That's ball in there for call strike one. One ball, one strike on Al Keline. Who's a fellow that's never played in the minor league. Came up as a youngster in, at 18 years old. Been with this club for 16 years, and a dandy he is. Pitches outside, ball two. And this is one of the reasons that Dale Smith put Mickey Stanley at shortstop to get this fellow in the lineup. And that bat of his, and he's used it. Little tap. But Axel will have to hurry. The flip over to Cepeda, and they just nip Kalon at first base. Maybe this is the uh, time of day, and it's some six minutes past three o'clock when those shadows, about halfway between the pitcher's mound and home plate, make it really difficult for the hitter. Which is not to say that there's not going to be any hitting, but whatever they do accomplish with the bat will be against some additional odds. You are right. 
Tom Cash is a hitter. He's 0 for 2 today. Washburn, the kick, the pitch. Fastball, on inside. Ball one. One away. Cepeda. On it. Down at first base is just about on that foul line. He is really guarding that first base line. Her ball. Low and outside, ball two. The Tigers scored two in the third. One in the fifth for their three runs. And the Cardinals scored four in the top half the fifth. Swing and a foul off the right. Yeah, I think you'd have to say that Washburn is ahead in this game, 4-3, without his best pitch. The change-up curveball just hasn't been getting in the strike zone for him. Two balls, one strike on non-cash. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside. Ball three. Well, non-cash, Jack, is a very good fastball hitter. Let's see if Washington will throw in the curveball of the fastball here with the count three and one on it. Cash had 25 home runs during the season. Boy, what a ripple he had at that fastball. I bet he'd like to have that one back. Dick Blues, the right-hander, warming up for St. Louis. About to be joined by another pitcher, Joe Horner, left-hander. Three and two pitch. Foul back. The count remains. Three and two. Joe Horner, a left-hander, and Dick Hughes, a right-hander. Warming up in the Cardinal bullpen. No action in the Tiger bullpen. Here's the three and two pitch. Her ball, did he? Started and held up at too long. for Willie here, Willie Hart stepping in that batter's box to give him a hand and I guess Billy Muppet, the pitching coach for the Cardinals saw Willie come up there and he wanted to say a few words to his pitcher Ray Washburn McCarver's out there talking to him too they could be giving Harner and Dick Hughes a chance, I'm sure that they're going to take him out with all those goes Muppet now he's going back McCarver coming back behind the plate. Just want to slow him down a little bit. Maybe remind him how to pitch for this fellow. Willie Hart, what's he done today? He's walked and grounded out. Run away. Non cash on it first. The Tigers trail in this game four to three. And the power hitter up there, Willie Hart. Here's the pitch. Pass ball. And Willie was the fellow that got the Tigers started over in St. Louis as he hit a home run for the first run of the Tigers. There's a ground foul down the third baseline. Coming back to first base, Norm Cash. One ball, one strike on Willie Hart, and it's one away. Mike Shannon playing a couple of steps off the line. Maxwell straight away for Harton. Javier pulled over towards second and Cepeda at first base holding Norm Cash on. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Outside ball two. The next hitter is Jim Northrop. And notice, Harner, the left-hander, is throwing a little bit harder and a little bit faster down in that bullpen. So don't be surprised if Harton gets on here. We may see Joe Harner come in this ball game. Two balls, one strike on Willie Harton. Norm Cash on in first, taking a sharp lead. Washburn looks over there. Here's the pitch. He starts, checks his swing. It's outside. Three to one.
For the count, three and one. Willie Hart and check for his coach, Tony Cucinella, down at third, and I'm sure he has the green light. If it's his pitch that he likes. Here's the pitch. It's too high. Ball four. Billy Muppet, the pitching coach for the Cardinals. And that will be all for Ray Washburn. So both pitchers who started this game, Earl Wilson. But the Tigers, he's no longer around. We've seen two since he left the game. Pat Dobson, Don McMahon. Now then, Ray Washburn in the start up for the Cardinals. He has been taken out, and they're bringing in the left-hander. Joe Hunter. Joe Hunter comes into the ball game. This is his second series appearance. He worked in the eight to one Mickey Lolich Tiger victory and hit a very unusual wild streak for Hunter. He usually displays good control coming in out of the bullpen. But he pitched only one inning and he walked three men. The runs were not charged to Joe. He's the ace relief man of the St. Louis Cardinals and he'll be faced with a tough hitter and Jim Northrup, a left-handed batter. Dick Hughes continues to throw down on the bullpen. Don McMahon is the pitcher as of the moment for the Tigers, who trail by only a run. They have the tying run on at second base. That's Cash. And the potential lead run on at first base in the person of Willie Horton. Now Larry Jaster, another left-hander, takes the place of Horner in the Cardinal bullpen. Horner used to be in the Houston organization, was drafted by the Cardinals. He's been invaluable to them the past couple of years. And he's capable of working four or five days a week out of that bullpen. He just cut loose with a wild pitch that caught the attention of the Tiger fans. One like that would really hurt St. Louis. You think he may be throwing that for effect with Jim North has been in that close to home plate? I think the trouble he had the other day, Thursday, Pee Wee, I was just happy to get the ball over. That's a good slider, good fastball. He's not uh, particularly adept at keeping the runners close to the base, and the left-handers get pretty good cuts at him, too. So he depends on putting the ball in certain spots, notably with that slider. Well, talking about the base runner, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem to him right now. As Norm Cash is on the second, and Willie Hart on the first, they do not have too much speed. And they're not a, in the habit of trying to steal base. So he won't have to worry about that. Joe Hunter... Comes a little bit sat on. He keeps that ball away from a left hand hitter. He could be a little tough. It's one away. Runners on first and second. The bottom half of the sixth inning, Hunter in relief of Ray Washburn. Here's his first pitch. That ball just got that out. That Hunter, strike one. Most of these pitchers are most pitchers today. Try to keep that ball away from from the hitters. What you get hurt on is that ball on the inside part of that plate. Here's the pitch. And a foul straight back, strike two. So quickly, Horner gets on top of Jim Northrop. And as Jack was telling you the other day he came in, he couldn't find the plate. Norm Cash on it second. Willie Harton on it first. Freehand in the on deck circle. Two strikes on Jim Northup. Honor is ready. Looks back at Cash. Here's a pitch. A little lazy pop up. It'll be an infield fly rule. Javier takes it. Northup is automatically out. And he really jammed him with that one, Jack. And he broke the bat right off of the hands of Northup. And he got the left-handed batter, and now he has to get the right-handed batter. Meanwhile, Bill Freehand, who's walked and fly to left in this game, is up there looking for his first series hit. He's 0 for 7. And what a spot this would be for the base knock, as far as the Tigers are concerned. And this is a fellow that they have called so many times, this Tiger Ball Club, as their leader. He led the Tigers in game play in 68. 
and a catcher. 155. Kind of unusual. The first pitch to Phil is freehand is high and outside, ball one. Well, the St. Louis catcher, Tim McCarver, hit a three run over with two men out. Now the Tiger catcher, Bill Freehand, is up in a comfortable spot. The Tigers trail, four to three. Bill Freehand, a count of one ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch. That's ball outside, ball two. The next hitter, Don Wirt. Jaster. Left-hander throwing in the bullpen along with Dick Hughes for the Cardinals. The 2-0 and pitch to Bill Freehand. There's a ball hit out in the left field, but it's going foul. And about this time, knowing Bill Freehand, I imagine he's a little bit anxious right now. He would like to get that first base hit, kind of break the ice. He does not have a base hit in the series of Jack Tilden. Old for seven. He's walked a couple times. Honor taking a little time. Two balls and one strike. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Foul straight back. Two and two. freehand the pull. Mass over toward right center. Flood over in left center and Lou Brock toward the left field line. Two balls, two strikes, two away. Two men on. Cash at second, Horton first. Horner sets, looks back at Cash. Here's the pitch. Another foul. Straight back. Horner with a count of two strikes on him. Got that ball away, and Freehand was thinking right with him, Pee He wasn't going to play into his hands and try to pull the ball. He was going the other way, just trying for the base hit. Two balls, two strikes. Cash taking a sharp lead at second. He'll come up with the pitch. Now he moves up a little bit. So does Hart. Here's the pitch. As the ball hit out in the left field. That ball will be caught by Lou Brock. Close to the foul line and close to the fence. And that's all for Freehand and that's all for the Tigers here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. So after a full sixth inning, it's the Cardinals four and the Tigers three. Half the seventh inning. And of course, all you people know now, working with me today, Jack Buck. He's been with the Cardinals since 1954. And he knows he's baseball. In fact, I've even seen him work out with the Cardinals. It's a pleasure working with him. Come on back in here, Jack. Okay, Billy, quite a ball game. The Cardinal totals at the end of six innings are four, six, and oh. And the Tiger totals are three, three, and oh. We're going to watch Don McMahon, the third Detroit hurler of the day. Don Wilson started. Three runs were charged to Wilson in the ball game. one to Pat Dobson. Don McMahon came on in the sixth and set the Cardinals down in order. We'll pitch to Flood, Maris, and Cepeda as we go into the late stages of the game. We start the seventh inning. Flood drove in the first Cardinal run. He walked, he fouled out, and he doubled in the fifth inning and drove home a run. First pitch to Flood. Right-handed batter taps it foul as McMahon, the right-hander, made his first pitch. Strike one. Gibson and McLean tomorrow. One o'clock starting time, Eastern Daylight Time. 
and broadcast time 1245. Be lots to talk to you about tomorrow with those two working. The next delivery to Flood is on the way, and he swings and a fly ball to right center field, and that's an extra base hit, maybe. It is cut off by Kaline. Flood's trying for two, now goes back to first. Flood started for second, turned around, and came back. As Kaline got to the ball, and Flood, fearful of his arm, got about a, almost halfway to second and came back. The throw was a little bit off line. It would have been close. I would say that Flood had ideas, but then he remembered how Kaline could throw, and Kaline did throw it, but Flood may have had a chance to be kept going. Flood's on at first. With nobody out here in the seventh inning, and Roger Maris is the batter against McMahon. That's the first hit off McMahon, the second hit for Flood in the game. Maris has struck out and walked twice and scored a run. He has hitting room through the right side. A half swing and a pop fly might drop for a base hit. It does. An extra base hit. Flood heads for third, Maris for second, and he has a pop fly double with nobody out. What a bad break for McMahon. A half swing, a check swing by Maris. Got the heavy end of the bat on the ball, and it dropped well beyond the reach of Don Word at third base. And the Cardinals have been at second and third, nobody out. So pay to the batter, and Mayo Smith out of the dugout, Dewey. Bad break for Detroit. Well, Jack, those are the kind of hits that really break a pitcher's back. You can see when that ball was hit, McMahon, the look on his face. And on Don Word's face, that he knew at third base that he had no chance to get it. And Flood on at first, who can fly, had no trouble coming in the third. And Maris, he decided he could make two. And Stanley made a play for him at second base, but not in time. So now that we have runners on second and third, and the Tigers are back in trouble. Tigers have two pitchers who just started to throw down in the bullpen. I doubt that either one of them would be ready at this point. Darrell Patterson is a right-hander warming up. And John Hiller is southpaws alongside. And Mayo Smith. Takes a little time out there on the mound to give the bullpen core time to get ready. But McMahon will stay in there and pitch to Cepeda, who's 0 for 3 in the ballgame. Runners at second and third, nobody out. Seventh inning, Cardinals already leading 4-3 in the ballgame. And the Tigers are in a jam. McMahon will work off the full windup. The Tiger infield comes in. Trying for the play at the plate on flood. The event of a ground ball. Outfield deep to the left for Cepeda. The windup by McMahon. Swung on and there's a drive to left field. It might be gone. It is a free run home run for Cepeda. Orlando Cepeda, who's been waiting for a big hit in World Series play, blasted a three run homer, the second Cardinal three run homer of the afternoon. And the score amounts to 7 2 3. Well, Cepeda, as we said before, has had not too much luck in the series, but when he came in at home plate there, Jack, you saw him and we did. He just took one big leap and dived on that home plate, and you can see how happy he was. And in that dugout over there, we're looking right in there, and they're having a ball. A big hit by Cepeda. Cardinals now lead the Tigers by the score of 7-3. to three. We've had four home runs in the game. McCarver a three-run homer. Cepeda a three-run homer. Flood has the other RBI. Al Kaline for Detroit, a two-run homer in the third. And Dick McCullough, the bases empty home run in the fifth. So all of the Tiger runs have been accounted for with home runs. And into the ball game comes the right-hander, Darrell Patterson, to become the fourth Tiger pitcher of the day. And as he warms up, we pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WJR in Detroit. This is Willie Horton. Keep air in your home clean and healthy this winter with a humidified, properly installed by a member of the Better Heating and Cooling Bureau. Start your day with the bright sound of WJR's Music Hall program, hosted by J.P. McCarthy. J.P. opens each weekday morning at 6 and continues until 9. Along the way, he may talk to anyone from a computer to a commuter. All light and easy to listen to. J.P. McCarthy and Music Hall, 6 to 9 weekdays on WJR. Well, a big seventh inning here for the Cardinals. And there's no one out. And they have scored three runs. A single flood, a blue double, a check swing by Roger Maris down at left field line, and a home run by Orlando Cepeda. You know the big thing about that uh, pop double by Maris 
Peewee is the fact they didn't give Mayo Smith a chance to get anybody ready in the bullpen. Or even had he wanted uh, someone other than McMahon to pitch to Cepeda, he just didn't have time to get anybody ready. It happened pretty fast, didn't it? It surely did, and um, I imagine that Mayo was wishing that he had a couple of more minutes to get Patterson ready. Only now was Patterson ready, and he comes in to pitch to the left-handed batter, McCarver. Flood's base hit was a solid base knock. And then the double by Roger Maris, a pop fly on a check swing, fair by about five feet, well beyond third base for a double. Now Darrell Patterson, a hard-throwing right-hander into the contest. Nobody on, nobody on as he takes over. And McCarver, Shannon, and Avier will be coming up. The Cardinals have pounded out nine hits and made seven runs. Tigers three runs on three hits, and there have been no errors in the game. We're in the seventh. McCarver is flied out, singled, and hit a three-run homer. Patterson, 6'4", 200-pounder, from Toll House, California. Won two and lost three during the regular season. Earned run average of 2.12, which is quite good for a relief pitcher. His first pitch is low inside to McCarver, left-handed batter, ball one. Well, I'm sure as the folks heard and read everything they did with regard to the series... I heard some people say they thought the Cardinals would do some hitting as well as the Tigers in this part. There's a high pop fly on the infield by McCarver. That'll be the first out of the inning. Don Wirt behind the pitcher's mound has it for the out. McCarver pops out. He's two for four, and the hitter is Shannon. Well, that was the first home run for Orlando Cepeda in his 15th series game. Jack, I'd just like to say one thing about this young pitcher on the mound out there right now, Darrell Patterson. If there's anyone that can come close to Bob Gibson's fastball, this young fellow has it. He has a real good fastball, and it tails in on right-handed hitters. Pitches to Shannon, and he jams him a ground ball to third. Fair ball fielded by Wirt. Low throw, but out as Cash came up with the play. Don Wirt made a good play, charging in on the slow roller by Shannon. Threw the ball in the dirt, and Cash helped him out. And there are two gone. Most people talk about Cash because they know about his hitting, Pee Wee, but... He's led the American League in fielding many times. He's good with that glove. Yes, he is. They kid him every once in a while. They call him old. And takes the pitch low. Ball one. Zapata charging in from first base. Shannon uh, has to sort of stop and go at third. Here's a butt toward third. Fielded by Shannon. He'll go to first base. To Javier covering, it's a sacrifice by Orla. K-line to third, and on to second goes Cash. Well, the Tigers have runners at second and third. One man out, and the batter will be Northam. He's good with that glove. Yes, he is. They kid him every once in a while. They call him old Iron Glove and say it's made by AMF. But uh, he is a good fielder. If he gets his hands on that ball, he comes up with it. Patterson has retired the first two, and he takes on Avier now with the bases empty. Gooley takes the ball in the dirt. Ball one. We're in the top half of the seventh inning, and the Tigers are going to have to come from behind if they're going to win this third game of the series. They trail 7-3. They'll have the tail end of their batting order up in the seventh with John Work due to lead off. And then Patterson. The pitch to Avier. High, and that's ball two. Avier is 0 for 2 in the game with a walk. Patterson is the fourth Tiger pitcher. Wilson allowed three runs, Dobson one, and McMahon three. Washburn worked less than six innings, gave three runs, three hits, struck out three, and walked four for St. Louis. 2-0 to Javier. Into the wind-up, the right-hander fires. Swung on and tapped foul past third base. Joe Schultz coaching there. Joe Schultz, the Cardinal coach, most likely will be going to Seattle next year to manage the new franchise in the American League. Turns out, Pee Wee, that Joe Schultz was a bat boy for Tony Cuccinello in 1928. They've been around a while. That was in Danville. 
Illinois. The pitch to Javier swung on, fly ball center field. Northrop broke back, came in, almost slipped under the ball, and has it for the out. Javier flies to center. Three runs on three hits, seven running stretch time. The score of the Cardinals, seven, the Tigers, three. We're going into the bottom half of the seventh inning, and the Tigers better make the move. The first hitter will be Don Wirt, and of course, trailing by a score of seven and three. Mayo Smith probably hates to take out Darrell Patterson after he looks so sharp there, but he'll have to try to get back in this ball game. And I see in the on deck circle a young fellow by the name of Wayne Comer in the on deck circle. They've called him back now. I was just wondering, Joe Hunter, as a rule, if I remember correctly, does not pitch too many innings. Though. He's a short man, but like one or two innings, he has two more innings to go or three more innings to go. You're right, Pee Wee. He's usually in there only for a couple of innings at the tail end of a ball game. He's already pitched two-thirds of an inning, and if he has, if he's to finish this game, he'll have more than three innings to work, so we shall see. He faces the right-handed batter, Don Wirt. Corner left-hander. Wirt is off for two. First pitch is over, but low ball one. We're in the Tigers' seventh, and St. Louis leads Detroit 7-3. to three. Tigers led it one time with a score of 2 to nothing. The pitch from Horner to Wirt swung on and missed, and it's 1-1. One and one. Wirt is fanned and grounded out. We have a pinch hitter waiting on deck, Wayne Comer, an outfielder, C-O-M-E-R. Looks like he'll be hitting for Patterson. Horner brings it to the plate on one and one. It's a strike call at the knees on the outside corner, and the Cardinal left-hander is out in front of Don Wirt, one and two. McLean and Gibson tomorrow. We hope you'll tune us in again. One o'clock game time here in Detroit. Broadcast time, 12.45 Eastern Daylight. The pitch, low inside, two and two. It'll be Wirt, Comer, and then McAuliffe. Horner. Walked off the pitcher's mound so that he could wet his fingers. Now goes into the windup. Wirt takes it. Ball three. And Horner thought he had strike three. And McCarver is really upset with the call. The pitch was down around the knees on the inside corner. And the count runs to three and two. Hiller warming up in the bullpen. The left-hander will be the next Tiger pitcher. Three and two in the leadoff hitter. Tigers would like to get him on. Foul out of play. Into the upper deck. Now bouncing downstairs. The attendance here today in Tiger Stadium, Detroit, 53,634. Very comparable to the crowds at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Honor with a 3-2 pitch coming. Wirt swings, fly ball, right field. Maris coming in, got a good jump on the ball, makes an easy catch, and there's one out. Maris saw that ball all the way, so evidently the sun in right field is not too difficult, Kiwi. No, I think it's moved around a little bit now. It shouldn't give him any problem. Of course, Roger Maris uh, is always noted for his home run power, but seeing this fellow play numerous times with the Yankees, he is a good outfielder. I see we have a little action down in the bullpen with the Cardinals now. Dick Hughes is back up. And so is Steve Carlton, the left-hander. Wayne Comer, the batter. This fellow had one home run during the regular season. A right-handed hitter. He takes a fastball high from Horner. Ball one. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Cardinals lead Detroit by the score of 7-3. to three. Third game of the series. The next delivery. Swung on, base hit into center field off the bat of Comer. He comes off the bench to single here with one out. And the Tiger fans make some noise. Here's Dick McAuliffe, who got a home run in the fifth inning and already has two hits in the game, and he is five out of 12 in the series. Well, it doesn't surprise me too much, Jack. This fellow, I've watched him all year, and he likes this sharp right field fence. And if he gets his pitch, he's got as much power as anyone on this ball club. He's facing a left-hander for the first time today. A lead by Comer off the first base, the pitch. Strike called, Horner gets out in front. With the Cardinals leading by four runs, Cepeda is not holding the runner close with a left-handed batter at the plate. McCall had drove in two runs against Steve Carlton, a left-hander, 
in the second game Thursday in St. Louis. The pitch coming, and it's swung on and fouled back and out of play. That's strike two. I imagine, Phoebe, that with McCullough's hitting stance, that wide open style he employs, he gets a pretty good look at the southpaw. Yes, he does. His right foot, they've compared him so many times to a great hitter who used to be with the New York Giants, Mel Ott. His right foot kind of goes in the buck a little bit, but you notice he keeps those hips in there. That's the reason he gets all that power. It's something for him to hit that outside pitch. The delivery, high, way high. Ball on one and two as Horner wasted a pitch. McAuliffe wanted the umpire to check the baseball. And Landis does so. It stays in play. Runner at first base, Comer, one out. Seventh inning. Seven three. Tigers trailing. Steve Carlton, the left hander. Dick Hughes, the right hander, and the Cardinal bullpen. Killer watching the action from the Tiger bullpen. A lead by the runner. And the pitch. McAuliffe swings, pops it up in the infield. That'll be the second out. Javier into the outfield grass. Has it. Two men gone. McAuliffe pops out. And the hitter is Mickey Stanley, who is 0 for 3 in the ballgame. He was robbed of a base hit back in the fifth inning when his smack back up the middle hit the pitcher Washburn on the leg and bounced over to the first baseman for an out. It's 7 of 3, and Stanley could make it close if he could grab one here. Homer at first, two out. Horner looks to first base and pitches. Way high outside, ball one. In the Cardinal eighth inning, it'll be the tail end of the batting order, Maxville and the pitcher. And then Lou Brock. Word started this inning with a fly ball to right, caught by Maris. Comer came off the bench and singled. McCullough popped out. Stanley takes it high, ball two. Mickey Stanley playing shortstop. They uh, put Stanley in a class with regard to his center fielding with Willie Mays, Kurt Flood, Jim Pearsall, and all of the other good ones that you can name during the past decade or so. On 2-0, oh, he'll be gunning. He takes it high, ball three. McCarver to the mound to talk to his pitcher. Al Kaline is waiting on deck, and the Tiger fans could have something to cheer about in this inning. Yes, they could. He hit a home run in the third inning. And this fellow, he didn't play a whole lot this year. He had a lot of injuries, k did, but he had 10 home runs. And he is capable of putting the Tigers right back in this ball game. And as you know, Jack, the Tigers have pulled a lot of ball games out of the fire from the seventh inning on into the ninth. That's been their trademark. Here's the 3 nothing pitch, and Stanley takes a strike three and one. He was taking all the way with the Tigers trailing by four runs. The score is 7-3 here in the seventh inning. Homer at first, two out. Horner is ready, delivers on three and one, and it's 4-4. Four, four. his first hit after he bailed Washburn out in the sixth inning. Now issues his first walk, and so the Tigers have been given five bases on balls today. And the Cardinals have been given six walks. So a big part of this contest. Al Kaline, the batter, fly to left, did a two-run homer in the third and grounded out his next time. Set four hits in the series. The pitch swung on, foul back, and he was going for the long loop. game already two hours and 45 minutes old because of the numerous walks and long counts and the scoring along with the extra care that the players take in a game of this importance K-Line a right handed batter battling the southpaw Joe Horner with two on two out in the Tigers seven seven three St. Louis K-Line could make it a one run ball game Ordinarily, does not allow many home run balls. The pitch coming. 
Swung on and grounded to Javier. Willie has it, forced out at second. The inning is over. K-Line forces Stanley to end the seventh inning. Tigers leave two on. They've stranded six. At the end of seven, it is St. Louis seven and Detroit three. Running to the top half, the eighth inning of the new pitcher for the Tigers. A young fellow by the name of John Hiller. He's six feet tall, weighs 185 pounds. Born in Duluth, Minnesota. I've seen him pitch a few times. I know one thing he does have. It's a good fastball, a good curve. He has no trick pitches. The first hitter for the Cardinals will be Dal Maxwell, the shortstop. He'll be followed by the pitcher, Joe Hunter, and then Lou Brock. Okay, Jack. Thank you, Peewee. It is Maxwell leading off against John Hiller, the left-hander. First southpaw employed by Neil Smith, manager of the Tigers today. And we go into the eighth inning. St. Louis scored four in the fifth, three of them on a home run by McCarver. Three in the seventh inning on a home run by Cepeda. And the Cardinals lead in the game, seven to three. Al Kaline homered for two of the Tiger runs in the third. And Dick McAuliffe's fifth inning homer gave Detroit their other run. 53,634 at the ballpark here in Detroit. Maxville is wearing the color. He's 0 for 3. He's 0 for 8 in the ballgame. And the pitch is on the way from Hiller to Maxville. A right-handed batter takes it high ball. One in the eighth inning is underway. Really gets to be pretty tough when the at-bats start to mount. You still don't have that first base knock in a series like this. Yes, I've been there before, Jack. <laughs> There's a fly ball to center by Maxville. Will be caught by the center fielder Northrop. He has it. One gone. And Maxville is 0 for 4. I was thinking of your former teammate, Gil Hodges. Remember the one where he had set that long string and a great hitter, a great guy. The whole world was pulling for him, and he couldn't get a base hit for love or money. Yes, I remember that, and uh, I think Gil went, like, went something like 0 for 17, and I never saw a fellow be cheered any more than he was in Ebbett Steele. In fact, the, the latter part of it, he was getting a standing ovation. He was a big favorite in Ebbett Steele. Joe Hunter, the batter, throws left, bats right, and corks one into the left field corner. Horton over after the ball, and he'll hold him to a single. Horner singles to left with one man out here in the eighth inning. By the way, talking about Gil Hodges, we hope that New York skipper is convalescing in rapid fashion. I understand he's doing much better, and he should be in the hospital for uh, maybe a couple of weeks. Then he'll go back to New York, and they say if he takes it easy, and I'm sure that he will. He'll be back in their manager next year for the match, and I understand that Rube Walker is pitching coach. So there's one thing for sure. Next year, Gil, you will not throw any batting practice. Joe Horner, who was hitless during the year, 0 for 6, just got a base knock, and Lou Brock is up against the left-hander Hiller. Brock has walked, singled, singled, struck out. Two for three and stolen three bases. Runner at first with one out. Ball one high. Maybe Hiller wanted a Horner to get on. In case Brock got on, <laughs> Brock would have Horner in front of him and couldn't do any running. We're in the top of the eighth inning. And the pitch. Fastball. Swing and a miss by Brock, and the count evens up at one and one. Yet another pitcher starts to warm up. Fred Lasher, a right-hander, is in the Tiger bullpen. hits for the Cardinals now in the game and four for the Tigers. Brock swings, base hit in the right field. It'll be fielded by Kaline and Horner stops at second base. Joe Horner falls down to avoid the throw in from Kaline back into the infield. So Lou Brock is three for four today, but he won't be able to run because Horner's in front of him. They have him trapped now, Jack. He's gone down to second so many times a day, he doesn't look out, he's level to run over top of Horner. <laughs> Horner dusts himself off after hitting the dirt there at second base. That's 11 Cardinal hits. Cardinals lead 7-3 to three in the game, and the batter is Kurt Blood. This is the first inning of work for John Hiller, who has followed Wilson, Dobson, McMahon, and Patterson to the mound. Tigers aren't likely to need any relief rollers tomorrow with Denny McLean pitching, however. 
Club the hitter, two for three. Curveball drops in, called strike, outside corner. But is walked, fouled out, double driven in a run, singled and started. A three-run seventh inning rally. Two on, only one out. One waits, and here it comes. Curve, fly ball, foul down into the left field corner. Down into the Tiger bullpen as Flood broke the bat. And that's strike two. We're situated, Dewey and I, a little bit up the third baseline with regard to home plate. The Hiller has quite a breaking ball, it's obvious. Yes, he does have, and you mentioned at the start of the game, Mayo Smith and his Detroit organization has done a terrific job in building up their bullpen. Most of their bullpen is considerably young in Hiller and Warden and Patterson, but they've done a great job for the Tigers all year. One is in the hole, 0-2. Two on, one out. The pitch coming. Curve in the dirt. Nice play by Freehan who blocked the ball, kept it out in front. The sun has disappeared, and I doubt that we'll see it again this afternoon. Just as I said that, here it comes. <laughs> make a great weatherman, wouldn't I? The lights are on here at the ballpark. Hiller pitches in flood. Curveball, fly ball, left center. Northrop, the center fielder, will catch it for the out. He has it. Two gone. The runners return. Flood, fly to center field. The hitter, Roger Maris, with one out of two plus two walks. And a key double on a pop fly in the seventh inning. Jack, what's your weather prediction for tomorrow? I'm not going to say a word, but they say it might rain here. This is Hiller's first inning of work. He's trying to avoid being scored on. Has to get the left-handed batter, Roger Maris. Maris didn't play much against left-handed pitching this year. The pitch to him, curve and a foul on a half swing. Strike one, that's the way he got the double the last turn. Looks like the fans remember it, too. Detroit jumped out in front of this ball game on a home run by K-Line in the third inning with a man on. And the Cardinals got four in the fifth and haven't been headed since. It's 7-3 now in the eighth. With two on, two out, and Maris ducks away from a high-tight fastball. the runners and pitchers, and it's high and tight again. Ball two. Killer from Duluth, Minnesota. Six-footer, 185. It looks a bit like Mickey Lolich on the mound. Although Lolich is a little bit heavier. The next delivery to Maris. Fastball. Fouled back. Maris was waiting for the fastball. Got it, but fouled it. And the deuces are wild again. Two on, two off, two and two on the hitter. In the Tiger eighth inning, some big hitters will be up there. Cash, Horton, and Northrup against Joe Horner. Two balls, two strikes to count. The left-hander gets ready and fires. And a curve is grounded to the first baseman, Cash. He gives it to the pitcher covering. He's out. The inning is over. Cash to Hiller. Cardinals lead two, and they've stranded eight. We're going into the Tiger eight. The score, the Cardinals seven, and Detroit three. In the bottom half of the eighth inning, Joe Hunter coming out and taking his position on the mound. The score is seven and a three. And Arm Cash will be the first hitter for the Tigers. A left-hander facing a left-hander. Then it will be Willie Harton and Jim Nossum. And I know that Billy Muffet, Red Shandies, will be watching Horner, as Jack Buck told you. He very seldom goes over a couple innings, but he looks pretty strong to me. And especially, I know Muffet and Shandies will be wanting to see another pitch to Cash and Nossum, both left-handed hitters. Seven to the three, bottom half the eighth inning. The Cardinals lead the Tigers. Tell you all about it, Jack Buck. And the Tigers have only four hits in the game, and that's not like them. 
And as Therese pointed out earlier, the Tigers have been a late-inning ball club many times this year. They pulled the game out of the fire in the eighth and ninth innings. We have a cozy little broadcast booth here at Tiger Stadium. It includes Jim Simpson, whom you've seen and heard many times on NBC, and our producer, Len Dillon. And we hope you've enjoyed our story of the ball game. Many people said when this game started that the winner of this contest would win it all, but if it ends like this, Danny McLean will have something to say about that against Gibson Law. Somebody's parading through the stands with a Cardinal banner, and that's dangerous duty. It's like waving a red flag here in this town, because this these fans here have turned out this year with well over two million. They haven't had a pennant in a long time. They're red hot. Norm Cash takes the ball outside. Joe Horner is on the mound. Retired two men in the sixth inning in relief of Ray Washburn. Got out of the seventh, though he allowed a single and a walk. Cash is looking for his first hit of the day. Swings and misses at a high fastball. And it's one and one. The totals here in the bottom of the eighth, 7-11-0 oh, St. Louis, 3-4-0 oh, Detroit. Cash on 1-1, one, one, pops one foul over our head and out of play, and it's 1-2. and two. It'll be Cash, Horton, and Northrop. All indications are that the pitching pairings will stay in rotation. Gibson and McLean tomorrow, and Bryles and Lolich on Monday the additional games here in Detroit. One ball, two strikes on Norm Cash, and the pitch, and down he goes. A head-high fastball thrown by Horner makes it two and two. Horner doesn't usually get many strikeouts in the ball game. Keeps the ball down and depends on his fielders to do the job for him. Two and two. To the leadoff hitter in the Tiger 8. Strike three, call a fastball. Cash doesn't argue about it. He knew it was in there, and Horner gets his first strikeout. One gun. The leadoff hitter is so important when you're down four runs as the Tigers are now. Yes, it is. And Norm Cash has never had the reputation of hitting against left handers but since he changed his new stance to that open stance of his, he's had a pretty good, good success against him, but not that time. Now Horner will take his chances against Willie Horton with the bases empty. The pitch to Horton, swung on and missed. And strike one, you could have to pay your way to the ballpark to have the privilege of getting up and taking a swing like Horton just displayed. He is really strong. One out, eighth inning. Bases empty as Horner delivers to Horton. High. The ball on the strike. Kim Northrup in the on-deck circle. 7-3, the Cardinals are out in front. The 1-1 delivery is on the way. Horton swings and misses. Horner got by it. And he's out in front on the count. One ball, two strikes. We talked about the fact that Horner doesn't usually work many innings in a game. He appears to be strong right now with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Horton takes a little time before getting set in the batter's box. The next pitch is coming. Swung on and missed. He got him with a good moving fastball. They tailed away from the left-handed hitter in there, two out. Jack. I think he's removing all doubts about whether he can pitch three innings or not because he is really bringing that ball in there pretty fast right now. And he has a left-handed batter up there, Jim Northrup. He's 0 for 3 and 1 for 11 in the series. Tiger center fielder. For whom they play straight away in the Cardinal outfield. The pitch coming, curveball, ground ball. Cepeda, big hop, makes the play himself. And the eighth inning is over as they go down in order. And at the end of eight innings, it's the Cardinals 7 and Detroit 3. We go into the ninth inning here at Tiger Stadium, Detroit, with St. Louis out in front of the Tigers by the score of 7-3. John Hiller on the mound, his second inning of work, and Cepeda leading off. Curveball in the dirt, ball one. And the ninth inning is underway. (laughs) 
Cepeda was off for three and then hit a three-run homer in the seventh inning. He swings and lifts a towering fly ball to left center. Northrop is going to catch it back near the track and has it between the 365 and 400 foot markers. Cepeda flies to center field. The batter, McCarver. McCarver hit a three-run homer in the fifth inning. The Cardinals were trailing at the time, two to one. Ray Washburn stands to be the winner in this game, and Earl Wilson stands to be the loser. The story on Wilson was that he pulled a hamstring muscle in his leg about five pitches before he was removed from the ball game in the fifth inning. McCarver takes the strike. If that muscle pull is bad, he might not see additional action. He may not. I saw him fooling with his leg while he sat on the mound when Mayo Smith came out there to talk to him. That'll be a big blow to the Tigers. Surely would. A ball and a strike to count to McCarver at the plate with one out. We're in the top of the ninth, and the Cardinals lead the Tigers 7-3. McCarver takes it high. Ball 2-2-1. Two, two and one. A three-hour ball game. How long about now? McCarver swings and a half swing and a tap to third. Wirt up with the ball and throws him out easily. Two gone. Well, Darrell Patterson worked one inning without being scored on. This is the second inning of work for Hiller, and the Cardinals haven't crossed the plate against him. Three runs against Wilson, one against Dobson, and three against McMahon. The batter, Shannon, one out of three plus a walk. Right-handed batter, left-handed pitcher. Swing and a miss, strike one. Killer out in front of the batter. And the pitch, changeup, goes high. Believe, we haven't seen much infield play in the three games of the series thus far, have we? Not many ground balls and double plays and action around third base and all. The pitch fouled by Shannon. That makes it one and two. No, we haven't. Jack saw a fine play by Mickey Stanley in the second game over at the Cardinals. And Dow Maxwell made a couple of fine plays. And now said that as far as seeing quick double plays, we haven't seen those. Curveball and a base hit to center by Shannon, his second hit of the day. Killer got a curveball out over the plate, and Shannon is now two for four in the ball game. And four out of 12 in the series. He's on with two out. And Javier is the batter. He's 0 for 3. Walk back in the second inning. The Cardinals have stranded eight runners in the game, but still lead 7 to 3. Detroit, in eight turns at bat, has stranded six. Cash holding against Shannon. And Javier swings, base hit into right field. Shannon will stop at second base as Kaline fields the ball. Two on, two out. We talked about Javier earlier hitting against those left-handers. He hit 500, I believe, Peewee, if that's all he saw. Jack, I just started to say that. I said, well, Javier, you told me how well he hits left-handers. Let's see what he looks like now. Before I could get it out, he had lined one in the right field. I've noticed a little bit, seems like against left-handers, kind of keeps that head down in there a little bit better. He did it that time. Shannon singled with two out. Javier followed with a single. And Maxville, looking for his first series hit, 0 for 4 in this game and 0 for 9 overall. Right-handed batter at the plate. The pitch from Hiller. Good pass ball and called strike one. The score, St. Louis 7, Detroit 3, ninth inning. Two on, two out. Hiller, the fifth Tiger pitcher. It's a sign from Freehand. And delivers. Foul back out of play into the seats, and that makes it strike two. Ball goes into the upper deck amongst the crowd of 53,634. Mostly Tiger fans and mostly quiet at the moment. But the Tigers have the ninth inning. Freehand due to lead off. Maxville swings, fouls another one. Off to the right, into the seats. Maxville batted 252, 
has come to be an acceptable figure for an infielder in this day and age. Yes, it is. And I was just noticing that Maxwell in 14 series game has not made a miscue. He can handle that glove with it. He can hit around 250. He has to be very valuable to a ball club. Curveball and a half swing and a foul rolling back. And it remains strike two on Maxwell. The totals at this point here in the top of the ninth inning, 7-13-0 and 0 for the Cardinals. Three runs, only four hits, and no errors for Detroit. Talking about shortstops. They can pick that ball. They have a fellow who was Tiger. He's not playing now. Ray Aller. If he can hit 250, I guarantee he can play anywhere. We've seen him in the late inning Thursday. The pitch to Maxville. Way high. Ball one. Shannon at second and Javier at first. It would appear that the Cardinals are about to go up two games to one with Gibson against McLean tomorrow. But the Tigers still have that ninth inning. High again to Maxville with a fastball. That makes it two and two. First base umpire, Bill Kinneman, will be working behind the plate tomorrow. The umpires go from home plate to right field, to left field, into third base, and work their way around to the plate. The pitch coming, and Maxville takes it high, and that makes it three and two. Pitch the eighth inning on two hits. But they were stranded. Two hits in this ninth inning with two out. Fred Lasher, a right-hander, is warming up in the Tiger bullpen. The runners will go on the 3-2 delivery. There they go, and it's high ball four. The bases are loaded. Hiller gives his first walk. It's the seventh pass given to the Cardinals today. Loads the bases and brings up Joe Hunter. got a base hit in the eighth inning. His first hit of the year. He throws left, bats right. A combination you don't see too often. Shannon at third, Javier at second, Maxwell at first with two men gone. John Hiller, the lefty. He's going to work off the stretch despite the fact the bases are loaded. Curveball fouled by Horner, strike one. Tiger fans quiet, waiting to see what the score will be when their club comes to bat in the bottom of the ninth inning. Base loaded, two out, the pitch, high. And that evens it up, one and one against Horner. Outfield playing Horner just a bit to the left. line in a step in right field. The pitch from Hiller. Oh, and a swing and a miss as Horner Chase went over his head. He's in the hole now, one and two. Fred Lasher, a submarine-type pitcher in the bullpen. In the left field corner for Detroit. Hiller with the bases loaded and two out. Trying to get out of the jam, and he has Horner set up. Comes to the plate, and it's high. Horner laid off, two and two. Horner chased one, so Hiller thought he might as well give him another. But the count goes to two and two. Kenny Kreider, back in the defensive captain. Now let's go to the bench and see whether they take penalty or not. Keep the down by two. Hiller still working off the screen. With runners at first, second, and third. High ball three, three and two. Now he's got to throw a strike or force in a run. We saw some of this Thursday when Horner walked a couple of men with the bases loaded and three Lewis. And if he walks him or loses him in any other fashion, it will bring up Lou Brock. The runners will all go with the pitch. The old merry-go-round. To the belt, there go the runners, and he struck him out. Horner goes down swinging. The Cardinals lead three. They spend at 11. The Tigers bat in the ninth inning with the score. St. Louis 7 and Detroit 3. Kimmy Reese along with Jack Buck. The bottom half of the ninth inning. The last chance for the Tigers. They trail in this ball game by a score of 7 to 3. Joe Hunter on the mound of the Cardinals. And here's what he'll have to face. And the bottom half of the ninth inning, Bill Freehand. 
leading off, Don Work, the next hitter, and I imagine a pinch hitter, I'm sure, will be the third hitter. Come on back in here, Jack. John Hiller pitched two scoreless innings in relief. No runs, four hits, struck out one, walked one. And Bill Freehand was walked and twice fly to left field. And that's the play. He's all for eight in the series. And he'll try to strike something for the Tigers at trail 7-3. Horner on the mound. Horner relieved in the sixth. Pitched the seventh and eighth pitches in the ninth. Steve Carlton, the left-hander. Dick Hughes, the right-hander. And the Cardinal bullpen in case Horner gets in trouble. He pitches to Bill Freehand and it swung on and popped foul back. And it goes near the screen and on the screen as McCarver chased back. Here we go. Turning point in this game came about in the sixth inning when Freehand was hitting against Horner. Two on, two out. Hit that fly ball that sent Brock back to the track. If that one jumped out, things would be a little different right now. Would have put the Tigers out in front. Yes, it would have. And, of course, you kind of wonder what would happen if Earl Wilson would have been able to stay in this ball game. Warner delivers and freehand takes the ball outside. It's one and one. Warner, a left-hander, freehand, a right-handed batter, Don Wirt on deck. Tigers have Krasinski on the bench as you think about a pinch hitter, a right-handed pinch hitter. Along with Ray Euler. Jim Price. Low inside to freehand. That makes it two balls and a strike. Still whooping it up here. Tigers need four to get back into the game at 7-3 St. Louis. Horner delivers. Freehand swing. Pops it into short center. Javier going out. Flood in. Flood calls for the ball. Glasses down. Makes the catch. One out. Freehand is 0-3 for three and 0-4-9. One gun. Down worth the batter. He's 0-3 for three also. Started out like a Tiger day when Al Kaline hit a two-run homer, a tremendous blast into the upper deck in left field in the third inning. Ball one low to work. Later, McCullough homered. And the Cardinals got home runs, first from McCarver to bring St. Louis from behind, and later from Cepeda. One out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. The pitch is on the way from Horner, and it's a strike called one and one. Jim Price is on deck. Tiger catcher, he'll be the pinch hitter for Hiller. Wirt swings, rounds one to short. Maxville up with the ball, almost lost it, throws, he got him. Maxville had the ball on his fingertips and almost dropped it, Pee Wee. Yes, he did, Jack. That ball kind of stayed down in the last hop to him. Dell almost came off the ball. McCarver down behind the plate to give the sign. Two out, bottom of the ninth inning, seven to three. St. Louis leading, the pitch coming, Price swings, and a high fly ball to left should end the game. Lou Brock, the left fielder, is under the ball, and he has it. The contest is over. The Tigers go down in order in the ninth inning. Final score, the Cardinals 7, and Detroit 3. 